point just moments before the opening kickoff between Rutgers and Army. Lou Brogno joined by Roger Cohn and Frank Lebono on a absolutely beautiful October afternoon up at West Point. You couldn't ask for a more beautiful setting and more beautiful weather at this time of the year. Artificial turf here, of course, at the Mikey Stadium as you take a look at the Scarlet Knights clad in their road uniforms, the white uniforms with the red trim and red numerals. Army will be in their home, gold and black. And some last-minute instructions from head coach Dick Anderson. Now, the captains have already met at the 50-yard line, and Rutgers has won the toss, and the Scarlet Knights have elected to receive. They will be moving left to right on your screen, and Army obviously uh, will be kicking off back deep for Rutgers, standing inside the 10-yard line. Tyrone McQueen and, I believe, Derek Baker, number 19. Looks like Eric Young, who's back there on the far side. Rutgers going to get the ball offensively, Lou Brogno. Let's see if Rutgers opens up that offense early in this ball game. That was a big concern of Coach Young. He wanted to make sure that Army, uh, excuse me, Rutgers was in a must-throw situation. And this game just about ready to get underway. And it's a line drive kick. Bounce is taken by Young at the 5. He's to the 10. And bottled up inside the 20-yard line as the cadets play it beautifully. And Rutgers will have the football first down and 10 at the 17-yard line. The Rutgers offense. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Up front, Nick Erda moves back into the center slot. Doug Strickland and Gurria are the guards. Milano and Tardy the tackles. Bruce Campbell the tight end. The receivers, Tyrone McQueen and Brian Cobb. The backs, Curtis Stevens and Henry Henderson behind Scott Ernie. First and 10, Rutgers on their own 17-yard line. Eye formation, Ernie hands off, second man through. That's Henderson right up the middle, fumbles the football. It's still loose and recovered by Campbell at the 40-yard line. Rutgers gets a huge break as Henderson fumbled the ball, and Rutgers has it outside the 40. Well, the fumble added about 14 or 15 yards on to the game. You'll take that anytime. But that was made at the line of scrimmage, a huge hole there off of right guard, and he just roared up the middle. Good yardage on first down. Bodes ill for Army. All right, the Army defense. Up front, they'll go with Gadsden, Haynes, Cooney, and Mathers. The linebackers, Shreffman, George Godfrey, Troy Lingley, and in the defensive backfield, Boyd, Peebles, Connor, and Verdan. Eye formation for the Knights. First down and 10 for Rutgers at the 41. Ernie rolls out left. Look. Still has the football, fires out of bounds. Catch was made, but well out of bounds. And it is incomplete. Second down coming up for Rutgers. That was Brett Mersola who tried to kiss stay in bounds and did not. Just talking about that hole, a huge hole. We look at the offensive line of Rutgers versus the defensive line. Rutgers, including Bruce Campbell, who's the lightest man at 235, a tight end, 260-pound average, while Army's defensive front is just 243. So right there we see a 17-pound mismatch per man. Second down and 10 for Rutgers at the 42-yard line. This is Curtis Stevens, left tackle, picks up Curtis a few, Stevens, gets up near the 48-yard line. Josh Haynes on the tackle for the cadets. Haynes, Haynes only a sophomore, but an outstanding performer, 245 with a very strong lower body. It's tough to move him out of there, Lou. Third down and four for Rutgers. Campbell in motion. Now sets to the left. Ernie straight back to throw. Looks, fires, incomplete. Intended for McQueen. And good coverage offered by Yale Peebles, number 20 for Army. A very important first down series defensively for Army. Rutgers looking to get on the board early. That's what they want to put Army on the defensive, so to speak, in terms of trying to make Army play catch up football with a wishbone offense. That's very, very hard to do. Matt O'Connell is in punt formation for Rutgers. He stands at the 35-yard line. Chance Connor deep for Army, along with Ernest Boyd. O'Connell averaging 39.6 yards per kick. It's a high spiraling kick taken by Connor. 
And he goes straight up field to the 30-yard line, and that's where the cadets will have the football. Connor, a real kamikaze guy returning those punts. Not the fastest guy in the world, but very sure-handed and not afraid to take a hit. The kind of guy you want back there fielding your punts. A 34-yard punt by Matt O'Connell and a 12-yard return by Chance Connor. All right, the Army offense up front. They'll go with Ratliff, Olenek, Raymond, Goodlow, and Schleiden. The tight end, Mark Charette. Eric Keltner, the split end. Mayweather, Barnett, Peterson behind. Mark Mooney, the quarterback who has the football, turns it upfield and is brought down from behind. Fine defensive play. Bob Spidell on the tackle for the Knights. Mooney, an outstanding option quarterback, would start on a lot of ball clubs. Obviously, he has to now because of the injury to Crawford, but he's a good one. What has hampered Mooney is not only the fact of the injury, but because of the fact that he has not been able to practice. You've got to practice with the option. Army out of the wishbone. Second down, six. Mooney keeps the football. He's got good yardage and then is brought down hard. Gene Austin for Rutgers playing it well. A pickup of about four yards on the play and close to an Army first down. Army is not the only team that has injuries. There's some injury problems for Rutgers. The defensive tackle, for instance, Scott Miller, has had a fine season thus far. Strained an ankle. Strained some ligaments last week. Is not starting this game. We thought we saw George Bankos come back. He is not starting the game, however. We'll give you the Army defense when time will allow. It's third down and one for the cadets. And Mooney gives up the middle, and that's enough for an Army first down across the 40-yard line to the 42. Paul Garia on the tackle, and the cadets will move the sticks. And notice they have Barth in, talking about the Army cadets, have Barth in as the fullback. An outstanding sophomore fullback, Ben Barnett. He suffered a slightly separated shoulder last week, and they'll miss him. Although Barth, another big guy at about 220 pounds, the same weight as Barnett. First and ten, Army. Mooney calls the signals, gives second man through, and it's a huge hole across left tackle. Mike Mayweather on the carry, the freshman for the cadets, came in with 284 yards rushing. Derek Baker makes the tackle. He's played more and more as the weeks have gone on, Lou, and he's getting better and better. Inadvertently in the opening, I called him a freshman and then said last year against Colgate would have been a tough, quite a feat. As it was, he had a tremendous game last week, as I said, rushing for over 100 yards against the Red Raiders. Very quick, shifty running style. Not a big guy at 170 pounds. Cadets moving the football. First down and 10 inside Rutgers territory at the 47. This is Barth around the left side. Struggles for about two or three. It will be second down and about seven coming up for Army. Lou, so I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Army broke the bone, as they, as they say. It's only half a wishbone. They took the one halfback, the right halfback, and moved him into a flanker position. Army doesn't do that too often. That might be something we look for them to go back with throughout the day. Second down, seven. Eleven minutes remaining, first quarter. Army on the move. And Mooney fires as a receiver. Catch is made by Keltner. He's across the 40 and finally driven out of bounds at the 35. Lewis, Frank and I were saying before the ball game, as we look at Keltner, Army's got to throw the football every once in a while just to keep the defense honest. And also, you've got to do things that will catch teams who have prepared a certain way for you unawares. That's what Rutgers did last week against BC. BC was not expecting that four wide out set. First down for Army at the Rutgers 34-yard line. Mooney gives, second man through. Mayweather not a whole lot of yards this time. He stopped up at the 30-yard line as the Scarlet Knights play it well. Carter Giles in there, along with George Bankos. You know, Army's offensive line is getting off the, uh, getting off the line very, very well. Offensively, uh, averaging 249, the Rutgers defense is 244. Not, it's pretty even, I think you'd have to say. But uh, Coach Dick Curl says these Army guys may be smaller than you overall, but they're like pit bulls. They'll jump up and bite you in the leg, and they won't let go. Second down and seven at the 30. Mooney still has the football, turns it in, and is met at the 25-yard line. And a fine defensive read for Rutgers coming up Gene Austin and some help from Paul Garia. That's a great play by the cornerback, although he's down right now. We've got a man down. Seems to be Gene Austin, the Rutgers co-captain, and he's an outstanding player. Uh, while he's down, just make a very quick point, Lou, as a former defensive back myself, playing against the wishbone, the toughest thing to do is to read that it's a definite run, that once you do, you've got to commit. You've got to come up with authority and reckless abandon and make the hit. Sometimes, though, Lou, you do get hurt. 
Gene Austin, a fine player for Rutgers and Roger. Uh, Rutgers can ill afford to lose Austin. The defensive secondary has been playing extremely well for Rutgers. Uh, the Rutgers defensive secondary has a seven interceptions, I believe, and Austin's one of his primary responsibility at the corner is to make sure is to make is to cover the quarterback and make sure the quarterback doesn't get too much yard. Looked like he might have just had the breath knocked out of him. I'm sure he'll be in. But you're right, Austin is just too valuable a player. Rutgers co-captain. They can't. They just can't lose him. All right, now a big play coming up for both clubs. Third down and two. Army certainly wants to keep this drive going. And Rutgers has not really shown the ability to stop the wishbone so far on this drive. George Banco's in at the defensive tackle on the left side now. Should help the Rutgers defense. Number 71. He's a big guy, that number 71. Third and two. This is Mayweather. He's got a first down, but there's a penalty marker on the play. He's got enough yardage to acquire the first down. We'll have to wait and see what the flag is. Nice quick trap play that time, Lou. They didn't need much. They, uh, it's going to be a legal procedure, though, unfortunately, uh, against Army. And penalties have killed them. They had another touchdown call to back last week, a seven-yard TD run by halfback Andy Peterson, and it came back to haunt them in a close loss to Colgate. Looked like John Owen, at the, defense, uh, the offensive guard on the left side for the cadets, just jumped a little bit too soon, and one of the reasons Mayweather was able to make such good penetration. Now, this is a big penalty. Of course, when you run the wishbone, a third down and two is obviously much different than a third down and seven, and it kind of puts a little more pressure on the cadet ground attack. Mooney's looked very, very impressive running the bone. He's very sharp. I tell you, Raj, he's a, he's a very good backup quarterback. He's only a junior. He's got another year of eligibility, and he is very good. Coach Young thought that the lack of practice time was the only thing holding the kid back right now. Third down and seven for Army. At the 29-yard line, Mooney looks to throw, fires, it is nearly intercepted, and then nearly caught. Darren Zella has almost picked it off, and it almost deflected into the hands of Eric Keltner. Incomplete. Fourth down for the cadets. Darren Sellers was right where he had to be defensively. I think he's surprised the ball got to him as quickly as it did. And Rutgers was almost able to turn it around. Keith Walker comes into the game for the Cadets. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt. Said nine in a row, though, and 10 for 11 on the season. Good snap. Kick is up. Kick is no good. It is wide to the left. And so Walker's streak ends. Army comes up empty. Rutgers holds, and the Scarlet Knights will take over. Very important first possession, though, Lou, because Army showed that it could move the ball against Rutgers. Hey, let's face it, coming in here, they were decided underdogs. Only seven points if you're, if you're the betting type, but uh, the talk amongst the so-called experts was that uh, Rutgers really wasn't nece is necessarily in the same league as Army, and, and vice versa. Army having its problems, particularly with injuries. Rutgers coming in very strong, very big, and very powerful. Very important drive to show they could do it. First and 10 for the Scarlet Knights. Here's the handoff to Henderson, bounces off a tackle, tries to take it outside, might have picked up. Two yards on the play. Chief Connor finally comes over with Charles Schreckman to make the tackle for the cadet. Rutgers going out of its standard offensive set, I believe, in its uh, first possession, only ran more than two wideouts twice. And I think some people might have been expecting, hey, coach, why don't you go with that with all those wideouts and perhaps scare Army? Because, again, that Army uh, secondary is somewhat questionable. But Rutgers uh, sticking to a relatively conservative game plan. Let's see how, how long it takes for them to open up. I'm a little surprised by that, Lou. You know, Roger and I were talking before the game, and we thought that Rutgers would come out almost immediately in that four wide receiver set. And here it is on second down and six. Ernie rolls out left side, has some running room, keeps the football, and it's brought down hard. Fine play again. Yale Peebles comes up to pressure Ernie, and then uh, the Army team follows up. Yeah, Brian Cobb, the wideout, one of the wideouts on the left side, had responsibility to pick Peebles up, and he simply missed his block. As we'll take a look at that play, you'll see, I believe, Cobb coming in a little bit too late. There he is. Whoops. Closing the barn door after the horse gets out, so to speak. The only thing that concerned me of, uh, on Ernie's part was the fact that he didn't look to throw at all. It really wasn't an option. It was a run all the way. That takes away some of the uh, effectiveness of that play. Third and three. Ernie straight back fires incomplete. Intended for Tyrone McQueen. He's flipped down at the 40-yard line. The coverage offered by Troy Lingley, the inside linebacker. And again, Rutgers is forced to punt. Matt O'Connell into the game for the Scarlet Knights, and he will kick it away from his own 23-yard line. The way these first two series have been important uh, for Army, Lou, is the fact there's a huge crowd here. If you get the crowd in the game, momentum can definitely swing your way. 
O'Connell kicked a 34-yard punt before this one. A little bit deeper taken by Chance Connor at the 25. He slips down and again, Rutgers with terrific coverage down here. And Army will have the football once again. Chris Pickell, who has done a tremendous job on special teams for Rutgers this year, down to make the tackle. Army will have the football at their own 26-yard line. 36-yard kick by Matt O'Connell and zero on the return. Let's take a look at the one-loss records this year for both Rutgers and Army. Rutgers, there you see it, the loss to Syracuse and, of course, the loss to Penn State. Army, on the other hand, has lost three in a row, as we illustrate it in the pregame show. First and ten for the cadets out of the wishbone. And Savoy now in a quarterback for Army. Morrell Savoy, sophomore, and he carries the football for about three or four. Here's the book on Savoy. Only a youngster, a sophomore, uh, has been doing extremely good on the JV level. The problem is... And has never taken a varsity snap before. He's a talented kid. He's a quick kid. Can he do it now in this situation? Second down, second down six for the cadets. No score, first quarter, 7.20 remaining. Savoy hands off, first man through is Bart, and he has excellent yardage. He may have enough for an Army first down. Derek Baker finally makes the tackle. Two, two comments. First of all, Rutgers with very, very sloppy tackling in the early going. Shows a lack of concentration, I think. First Secondly, down. I'm going to ask you, Frank, why, why the change of quarterback? Well, I was just looking for Mooney. There's the replay of Barth. Good hole and good hard running. I'll get back to that after this play, Roger, because I think I know why. First down, 10 for the cadets as they move the sticks again. They're at their own 37-yard line and met in the backfield on a hard Here's tackle is Barth. Making the play for the Scarlet Knights. Udovich. 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 Uh, to get back to that point very quickly, Lou and Roger, uh, I was looking on the sideline. The first thing I did to do uh, to, was to look for uh, Mooney on the sidelines to see whether the doctor was working on him or whether he was walking normally. He was not. He was limping, and I think that is the problem. The toe must be bothering him. You just saw Rutgers has defeated Army six of the last eight meetings. And this is a nice run by Savoy, finally wrapped up, but not before he picks up about four yards on the play. And again, it is Yudovich on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, I see the team position now. I, we can't get a shot of it, uh, Lou, but I see the team position talking to Mooney. We talked about that turf toe injury. And, you know, I know there are people listening at home, and they say, well, what's the big deal? He's got a sore toe. It's much more serious than that. It's a dislocated toe, and you cannot put, pivot without the use of all your little tootsies. Third down and three for the cadets. Army at their own 44. Give up the middle again. Rutgers plays it well defensively. John Barth carried the football for the cadets. And he fumbled the ball and was fortunate enough to recover the fumble. Rutgers still not going with either Scott Miller or George Banco. So Rutgers certainly losing something up front. Fit Rambush is in to kick the football. For Army, it's a towering, driving kick, which takes McQueen back inside the five. He's to the 10 and upended across the 15-yard line. A tremendous punt by Rambush. John Garcia on the tackle for the cadets. I just watched Mooney go to the locker room, so obviously he has a problem. Lou, I don't know if we'll see him uh, later in the game. We'll take a look. And uh, we're going to take a look at a replay right now. And there That'll it be is. a 54-yard punt by Rambush, a 14-yard return, and a real hard landing there by Tyrone McQueen. Good job of body under control by Garcia. Big defensive tackle downfield. Not the easiest thing to do for those big guys to tackle those little backs, Lou. Receiver split out left and right for Rutgers. Rutgers with a first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. Scoreless first quarter. Ernie back to throw. Play action. In trouble. Now fires long. Looking for Cobb and his score. And a penalty marker on the play. Brian Cobb with a tremendous reception inside the Army 40. Now there's a flag on the play. You might call it either way. Cobb, uh, they were both pushing off. And they're going to talk to the official now. Cobb made a fine play coming back to that football. The ball was underthrown. 
And it is defensive interference, and Rutgers, I'm sure, will take the reception as we take a look at the play again. Uh, Chuck Williams on the defense, pretty good protection. It breaks down at the last minute. I think that's Mathers on the pressure. A lot of shoving downfield. The reason why Williams got flagged is because he played the man and not the ball. That has been a big, big problem for Army all year long. 55-yard pass play, the longest play against the cadets this year. And a great individual effort by Brian Cobb, who, who got hurt last week, is playing with a hip pointer. Cobb comes in with nine receptions on the year. All right, Rutgers in business, first and ten at the RB 39-yard line. And up the middle they go, Dan Lipset carries the football for the Knights and might have picked up a yard. Troy Lingley on the tackle for the cadets. You know, it's interesting, Army's secondary is very aggressive, particularly on the hit, on the tackle. Their style of defensive play is under. Let them catch the ball under, then come up and punish them. The only problem with that is that they're a little soft on aggressively going for the football. They're always looking to make that big hit, and it has hurt them so far this year. Second down and long for Rutgers. Call it second and nine at the Army 37. High formation for RU, and the pitch goes to Henderson. Around left end, and he is close to first down yardage. Finally forced out of bounds inside the 30 by Chance Connor. Henderson, uh, nice block by the tight end. Uh, uh, on that side, Campbell just caved in the entire right side of Army's defensive line. Great block. You know, I was thinking perhaps Rutgers was waiting to get better field position before it opened up the offense, but here they are moving pretty deep in Army territory and still playing relatively conservatively. Third down and one for Rutgers at the Army 29. 4-20 remaining. First quarter, no score at Mikey Stadium. Again out of the I formation. The Scarlet Knights line up. Ernie pitches. This is Henderson. He cuts back as the Rutgers first down. And a penalty marker late after the play is over. Again, Lingley on the tackle. We'll have to wait and see what the flag is all about. Also a nice job by Greg Gadsden, the defensive end linebacker. It's Henry, uh, Henry Henderson. And we got a penalty against Rutgers, but a nice play by Gadsden. The linebackers, we take a look at it on the replay. Here it is coming up, and you'll see Gadsden. There he is fighting off the block. Slips in right there and gets a piece of the tackle. They didn't get the offensive push that you need on a play like that. There's a bad penalty for you. Rutgers hasn't taken too many bad penalties. In fact, too many penalties at all this year. Just 20 times in six games for about 180 yards. Uh, meanwhile, that cost them a first down. Henry Anderson came in averaging 5.3 yards per carry. Uh, that time he got the necessary yardage for the first down, but as we mentioned, the penalty will wipe it out. So now you have a third down and seven situation for Rutgers. And Rutgers is 0 for 2 on third down conversions. The Cadets uh, 1 for 3 at this point in the ballgame. Rutgers came in 45% the average on their third down conversions. They Possible have blitz situation. Ernie back to throw, and now he'll run. Ernie fumbles the football, and if he did pick up the first down on the run, he lost it on the fumble. I think he might have come up about a yard short in any case, Lou. Recovery so you would expect to see Carmen Squafani in to kick the field goal. Here's the replay, Lou, and I think it's Charles Schretzman, the outside linebacker, defensive end. Yes, perfect technique. They teach you in the open field, especially on quarterbacks, because they rarely have time to tuck that ball away to rake your arm down and try to strip the quarterback of the football. All right, Scalfani into try the field goal attempt. It'll be a 50-yarder. He's two for five outside the 40. Kick is up, and it is short. So both teams have missed field goal attempts, and Army will take over on the possession. You know, you see the flags, Lou. They're blowing very, very powerfully from right to left. That's south to north. That would have been a tough kick, Lou. There was nothing wrong with the line. It was straight on, as a matter of fact. And just as uh, Frank mentioned, I had to think the wind had a little bit to do with holding that ball up. So both teams have had scoring opportunities, and both teams have failed here in the first quarter. And we're scoreless. 324 remaining. Army has the football at their own 32. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage is Mike Mayweather. Might have picked up a yard or two and uh, coming in on the play for the Knights. Spidell. Spidell. And number 71, George Bancos, a 6'3", 267-pound junior who has been hurt. 
most of the season. Really seeing his first action in uh, quite some time, making the initial hit on that play. He's very important to this defense. Second down, six for the cadets. Running out of the wishbone, of course. And it is Savoy who gives the ball on the handoff. And again, not much yardage. And Rutgers plays it well. Chuck Paw on the tackle. Alec Hoke also in there for Rutgers. The ball carrier was Bart. And he might have picked up a yard, third and five. Take a look at it at the replay there. You see a host of Rutgers tackles. I was impressed with Alec Hoke simply because he did not get moved. Sometimes you can make the play without making the tackle, and that was the case with Alec Hoke. Third down and six, actually. The ball is at the Army 37-yard line. Savoy gives, second man through, Bart. And Rutgers plays it well. Bankos on the tackle again. And it would seem that Army is having just a little bit of trouble with their execution now. Banco's experience counts so much. I was talking to the players in the motel last night. They're so happy to have him back. They know they realize how much they, they missed him and how much they've needed him. Bit Lambush, who got off a rocket last time, kicks another good one. And this is McQueen, who takes it up the gut and is close to the 30-yard line. So Rutgers will take over on another change of possession. 148 remaining first quarter, and the Scarlet Knights will start their drive at their own 29-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Rambush and a return of 10 yards by Tyrone McQueen. You know, Lou, execution is so important in the wishbone. That is the key to good wishbone football. And the key to the whole thing, the key to the execution, is the quarterback. Right now, the young man, Savoy, is not reading his keys properly. He has to ride that fullback. If it looks jammed up in the middle, he's got to take it out of his stomach. Then option to defensive end. If that's covered, then pitch out to the wide man. He's not doing it. Mersola is wide left. And McQueen wide right for Rutgers. First down and 10 at the 29. Ernie Gibbs, Curtis Stevens. Left tackle, picks up two or three. Stevens Might have gotten carry. to the 32. Troy Lingley on the tackle for Army. Stop. Both teams playing very conservatively, Five, though. Nine, you kind of expected that from Army, not necessarily from Rutgers. Yeah, they put it up a little bit, but they haven't thrown the ball on first down all that often, and we really expected that. Perhaps Rutgers thinking that they might be able to dominate playing its normal, relatively conservative game plan, and thus far it certainly hasn't worked. Second down and six at the 33. Mike Foddy into the game, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Will Huff on the tackle for the Cadets. So far, Will Huff has kind of been a fly in the ointment. Uh, he's played extremely well. There's been a couple of plays where he's been very close. Hasn't necessarily made it, but he gets there. We're going to take a look at the replay. Look for number 78. There he is. And does a nice job. Josh Haynes, number 82, the very aggressive sophomore, also getting in on the play. I think Body had an option whether to go inside or outside on that because there were a couple of uh, blockers outside the, the view of the, of the screen, right at the top of the screen. Blockers were out there, might have had a little bit more room, but he decided to take it inside instead. Now twin receivers split out to the right on the third down and six, and he fires at the receiver. Campbell makes the catch and just steamrolls his way across the 45, up to the 46 before Yale Peebles. Finally makes the tackle, but it is a Rutgers first down. I tell you, Peebles is about a 200-pounder, and uh, it wasn't a pleasant sight, that big tight end in the open field. I know I'd hate it. Let's take a look at the replay. Campbell running off the field. There's the catch. He gets hit at the 43 and drags two people an extra four yards. We have 17, 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter. That is Ernie's first completion in three attempts. They've only thrown the ball three times. Should be the last play of the quarter. Ernie rolls out left side, fires, has a receiver. Catch is made inside the 45. Tyrone McQueen has another Rutgers first down. And the clock stopped with two seconds remaining in the quarter. But they will move the sticks. You know, once again, you see that philosophy, that defensive secondary philosophy. Let them catch the ball short. Don't get beat deep. And that is the end of the first quarter. So we've played one at beautiful Mikey Stadium. Your score is Rutgers nothing, Army nothing. And the Association of Graduates are at Gala, Bicentennial. Welcome to STS Car Service Center. At STS, we feature the new Michelin Sport EPX performance radios for foreign and domestic cars. Michelin all-season high-tech radios, like the Sport EPX, are the choice of discriminating tire buyers. New Jersey is driving to STS Car Service Centers. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. New Jersey is driving to STS. Driving.
As we come back, Rutgers on the move. First down and 10 at the Army 40-yard line. Just underway. Second quarter. And no score between Rutgers and Army. Referee made the Scarlet Knights go back in the huddle for some reason. Now they'll come out. Let me just straighten out one statistic. Ernie is one for six. I said one for three. He's one for six in the first quarter. Ernie back to throw. Fires has body. Coming out of the backfield. Takes it across the midfield. And to the 32-yard line, Troy Lingley. Again on the tackle, we've called his name many times throughout this first half. A little bit of a delay back out of the backfield. Very effective against the type of defense that Army plays. Because their secondary is not the quickest in the world, they have to get deep into their zone coverage. So what happens is that leaves lots of gaps in the short areas in the flats so the tight end can be effective and the back out of the backfield. We'll look for them for Rutgers to come back to that later in the game. You saw Ernie's stats over the last two games and the slow start today. This is up the middle to Stevens, who has good yardage across the 30, down to the 26-yard line, and it is Schretzman on the tackle for Army. Now Rutgers showing two wide receivers there as we have a Rutgers man shaken up on the play. Looks like uh, defensive guard Doug Strickland, number 68, but two wide receivers and a wing, a wing back, and uh, he was playing actually a little bit wide for a wing, so maybe Army was seeing... Three wide receivers, just the one sat back. Army perhaps thinking pass, and the ball goes to uh, Curtis Stevens. Lots of room up the middle for the co-captain. There's a look at Strickland. 6'1", senior, 260 pounds. He comes out. Looks to be just a little shaken up, and we should see him later on. We talk about consistency. Rutgers with his first big drive of the afternoon here early in the second quarter. This will be the seventh play of the current drive. You know, Lou, uh, we may see a lot of injuries up here. This turf... It's a fine stadium. I'm not crazy about the turf. We may want to get into that a little bit more later. All right, Ernie rolls out on first down. Still looking, still looking. Fires incomplete. Oh, nice job of rushing the quarterback by Josh Haynes, the sophomore defensive lineman. His first varsity action at defensive lineman. They were using him as a tight end last year. He's kind of tall and rangy, 6'3", about 245 pounds. Mike Lover also in there with a lot of good pressure. He's a big guy, 6'4", about 260 pounds. So trying to get the beef in there on defense and get some more pressure on the quarterback, Scott Ernie. If they let him sit back there or roll out uncontested, he'll kill them sooner or later. Second down and 10. Split backs behind Ernie. And Scott hands off to Stevens, who puts on a nice move and a great run by Stevens to get down to the 10-yard line. Peebles and Connor finally coming over to make the tackle, but he really put a move on Schretzman. Oh, did he ever? He faked the proverbial shoe off of Charles Schretzman. If you take a look at the play, you'll see Schretzman coming up. Whoops. Stevens now four carries for 30 yards with most of that, or a lot of it, coming on that last run. But again, Rutgers now uh, working on its deepest penetration of this ball game, and here we are about a minute and a half into the second quarter. Rutgers looking to get the first points on the board. First and 10 at the 10. It is possible, I believe, for Rutgers to get a first down without scoring. They pitch it to Body, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Might have forced ahead for a yard. Stop by Good play that We're time in. by Huff again and Schretzman. Yeah, they're, they're, when you're on the goal line, Lou, it's so important to get positive yardage on every play. You don't have to score on the first play, but you do have to get positive yardage. That time, Army would not let Rutgers' offensive line push them off. Push them off the ball. Very, very important move by that time by Army. Eye formation for the Scarlet Knights this time. And it is second down and ten. Ernie, play action. Fires has a receiver. Stevens makes the catch. And then it's swung down at the seven yard line by Chance Connor. Play was open, but Connor made a fine defensive play. One thing that has marked this Rutgers team is the fact that an awful lot of people have been getting into the passing offense just looking at the backs. Curtis Stevens, Dan, as we take a look at the ball at this play, this will be Stevens' sixth reception of the season, as you can see, making the catch. Dan Lipset has five receptions, Henderson five, Mike Body five. That's addition to the tight end and the wide receivers. Third down. And seven. Ernie to throw, fires end zone, Cobb incomplete. George 
Coach Godfrey made the play on defense for Army as he came in and nailed Scott Ernie. That was a blitz that time. The inside linebacker came hard and made Ernie throw that football away. That's what Army has not been doing, and they must do today. They must challenge Scott Ernie with the pass rush. Lafani is in to attempt a field goal. It will be a 24-yard attempt. He missed earlier on a 50-yarder. Kick is up. It is good. So a 24-yard field goal by Carmen Slafani, and Rutgers is on the board. A break in the action with 12 minutes and 4 seconds remaining. Second quarter, the score, Rutgers 3, Army nothing. Let's face it, pets are part of the family. Whether it's man's best friend or that goldfish you've had forever, our pets need expert care. At Fez and Run Pets, we offer the products and services to help you care for your important family member. Products for dogs and cats, birds, reptiles, and small animals, outdoor garden ponds, and the area's largest marine and tropical fish department. Featuring a complete line of Tetra foods and products and information books from the new Tetra Press. Remember Fez and Run Pets because he's not just a pet, he's a family member. Welcome back to Mikey Stadium. There's Dick Anderson, head coach of Rutgers, 18-18-2. At the helm of the Scarlet Knights. Doug Giesler is in to kick off for Rutgers. And back deep for Army. Mayweather. Kim. And Kim. William Kim. And it is Kim who has the football. At the 10, to the 20. And a nice run back as he's across the 20-yard line up to the 23. And Mark, excuse me, Chris Pacal again on the tackle for Rutgers, and he seems like he's always in on the tackle well, on kickoff. That's that's kind of a, a familiar name for uh, for Rutgers. Oh, there's the sort of stats of the Rutgers drive. 11 plays, 67 yards, four minutes in, 40 seconds possession time, five runs and six passes. So they they mixed it up well. 21-yard return by Kim, which is a season average, by the way. All right, first down and 10 for Army. And this is Savoy with the football, keeps it himself, and the Scarlet Knights Savoy, are in on Savoy quickly. He might have picked up a yard as he gets to the 25. And Pat Yudovich, who is playing well defensively for Rutgers in his first half, makes the tackle again. Linebacking and secondary play are usually key in stopping the wishbone. Lou, you've got to have good linebacker play. You've got to have the type of linebacker that can range from sideline to sideline. Second down and seven, actually second down and eight. And Savoy gives to the first man through. That is John Barth, the fullback who carries. Gets up to the 30-yard line. And it will be a third down play coming up for Army, third down and three. Steve Talkins, a junior, and Marty Mays, a sophomore from Orange, New Jersey, making the tackle. Watch the way the defensive line converges. There's 65, Mays, the first man who hit him. But Rutgers really smelling the football and going right to it. Third and three. And Savoy keeps it this time, and he should have enough for the first down. Had to get to the 34, got to the 35. Spidell made the tackle, but it was a little too late as Army picked up the first down. Nice read that time by the kid Savoy. That's what we were talking about earlier, reading the defense. If they're going to take the fullback, pull it out of his stomach, keep it yourself, option the defensive end, and either take it upfield or pitch it out. By the way, Morel Savoy has yet to throw the football in a varsity football game. First down and 10 at the 35-yard line. Savoy pitches, and this one in a little bit of trouble, but a nice effort by Andy Peterson, who does get some yardage after it looked like he would get none. Peterson is a 210-pound halfback, runs hard, Fairly quick, doesn't have the great speed, but he's very, very good on the option. As we take a look at Peterson coming up on the uh, replay, he's let's a see if we can good see, solid me, back. Let's see if we can see Darren Sellers actually for, forced his play. There he is. You see him forcing him back inside, slowing Peterson enough. So coming in from the backside, we saw Chris Evans actually making the stop. Up the middle, nice run, good pickup for the cadets. Mayweather on the carry. 
and it will bring up a third down play for Army. You know who Mayweather reminds me of? I hate to compare college players to pro ones, but he reminds me of Benny Malone. Seems to be running in seven different directions at the same time. Elbows, wrists, knees, and ankles. There just doesn't seem to be an area to tackle, and he's very effective. He's going to be a good one for Army for a long time to come. Only a freshman, 5'8", 177 pounds. All right, it's third down and two for the cadets. They're at their own 42-yard line. They trail 3-0, 9.25 remaining, second quarter. Hey, you want some popcorn? And Savoy is brought down in the backfield. Fine defensive read by George Steve Tompkins, excuse me, of the Scarlet Knights. Great defensive play. Shot the gap and made the play before the offensive lineman could get to him. Looks like it was going to be a trap. Frank, I brought up a couple of plays ago. The fact that Morel Savoy hasn't thrown the football. And the question, he's going to have to. He's going to have to before this afternoon is over if Army wants to score some points. Rambush. With a fine driving kick, McQueen at the 15. He's to the 20 to the 25 and then brought down. All right. Jump. Nice coverage by the cadets. And Rutgers will start near their own 30-yard line. See, that last defensive play, there's something I want to bring out. One of the ways to stop the wishbone is to get to the point that they call the mesh point. That's where the, um, the quarterback has the first option, that is the fullback. If the defensive tackle, who is usually unblocked, can get there before the quarterback can get the ball to the fullback, confusion reigns. The ball goes all over the field. It becomes an ineffective offense. If Rutgers can do that throughout the game, Army's in for a long day. Twin receiver split out left, but the give is to Henderson as he goes to the right. He scoops across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Picked up about three on the play. And it will be second down and seven coming up for Rutgers. Nice block by Ivan Gurria. Very Bruce, nice actually, Henderson trying to follow the blocking of his tight end on the right side, Bruce Campbell. And Arby did very, very well to force Henderson back inside. All right, second down and seven for the Knights. Here's Rutgers with a pro set, Lou. No multiple wideouts. At least more than two. Ernie straight back to throw. Has time. Fires, and it is incomplete. Intended for Eric Young. Almost made a sensational catch. Dave Bernan on the coverage for Army. Dave Bernan, a big play guy in the secondary for Army. Had a big interception last week against Colgate and two weeks ago against Boston College. He is their big play guy in the secondary. Here comes the replay, and we'll take a look at it. One thing I want to point out is look how deep the safeties are playing for Army. They really respect Rector's speed. Nice play by Berdan. They had the under and over coverage. Cornerback came up to take the short zone. Connor, the safety, went back to take the deep zone. Pretty good coverage that time by Army. Rutgers only one of five on third down conversions, but they'll get one here. Nice execution as Ernie hits Campbell coming across. Ernie across the 40 to the 42. Ernest Boyd makes the tackle, but they remove the sticks as the Knights acquire the first down. Up until the last two ball games, Bruce Campbell really wasn't playing in a, a very important part of this Rutgers offense. As we take a look at that play and see how open he is after an initial delay and then coming across Nobody even close to him. He has now caught the ball, I believe, about 19 times. 19 times a season, twice this game for 24 big yards. First and 10 for Rutgers. Ernie straight back to throw. Fires has time. Young makes the catch. He's down to the 30-yard line. And a fine throw and catch by the Scarlet Knights. As it will be another Rutgers first down. Same coverage that, uh, that Ari had and the uh, incomplete pass play. As we take a look at it, you'll see Dave Berdan on the short zone coverage and Chance Connor, who falls down. There he is on the ground right by the 30-yard line, who fell down. Otherwise, they had a chance of making that play incomplete like the last one. They had the right coverage call, but they didn't execute the defense. First catch for Eric Young, who comes off the tremendous game against Boston College last week. Nine receptions against the Eagles. First and 10 at the 30. Young rolls out right side. Looks, fires, has a receiver. McQueen makes the catch. He has a Rutgers first down. Cannot shake the defender, but does pick up enough yardage. That was Chuck Williams on the defense. Boy, he just hung on to his shoe. Otherwise, that was six, baby. Remember we said going into the second quarter that Ernie was one for six. He is now eight for 14. He's seven for eight, 142 yards. So uh, he has certainly improved his stats mightily here in the first seven or eight minutes of the second quarter. There's your first quarter statistics, and you can see the Rutgers well ahead in the statistic game. Ernie's making his passes count, Lou. That's money throwing. 
This is Henderson. Around right in. Nice move by Henderson. Is he in? He is not in. No indication. Forced out of bounds at the three-yard line. Dave Verdan saved the touchdown. I hope we can take a look at that play again. I don't see how Henry Henderson found his way up the sideline there. There was absolutely no room, but watch him follow his blockers. Tremendous look. individual effort this time. Good cut there. Picks up a block from his fullback. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another tackle and leaps for the end zone. What an effort. Henderson, 5 for 41, and I think you saw number 20, a wide out. Brian Cobb blocking his man and holding that block. First and goal, Rutgers at the Army two-yard line. Full house backfield for the Scarlet Knights. Dwight Giles carries the football and gets very little yardage Giles, as Dwight Army Giles, stacks it up well in the backfield. They got a field goal a little while ago. Dave Verdan again. He's a big play guy for them, Lou. He, he really does extreme, uh, an extremely good job for Army. Very aggressive. Big guy in the secondary. About 197 pounds. Fought off the block of the fullback and made the hit. You saw Dan Lipset pound the ground with both his fists because he just lost his man. First carry of the game for Giles. See if Rutgers goes up top. Yeah, I'm looking for a little play action pass here, Lou. Second down. Goal at the two. Stevens, Curtis Stevens, touchdown Rutgers. The right side of that Rutgers offensive line just blowing Army's left side off the ball. And, you know, we talk about, Frank, wondering Rutgers will open it up a little bit. When you've got that kind of mismatch and you know what you can do, then I guess you stay what you know you can do. you got to dance with uh, who brung you, as, as the saying goes, I suppose. But uh, that was power football. As we look on the replay, look at the power eye formation. They seemingly run away from the eye, but what they did is they took the halfback who was on the left, crossed him in front of the eye back to get that extra blocking back in there. Good offensive surge. Hey, it makes it easy. Lou, you might even be able to run through a hole like that. What do you think, big guy? <laughs> I doubt it, but... Uh... Stevens did it well enough for Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers leads by the score of 9 to nothing. They'll be looking to tack on the extra point. Carmen Slafani is into the game. Five minutes, 55 seconds remaining. There's a look at Mooney on the sidelines for Army. Now remember, he started at quarterback for the cadets. He has been throwing on the sideline, so we may see him again. All right, extra point attempt. Snap is good, kick is up, and it is also good. good. So, a break in the action with five minutes, 55 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And the score is Rutgers 10, and Army nothing. Rutgers. Second quarter, 47, around nothing. Second quarter, Syracuse 21, and game nothing. Oh, hi. Just a reminder, before you decide where to buy your next car or truck, you owe it to yourself to visit either the number one dealer in Rockland, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Spring Valley, or the number one dealer in Orange, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Walden. Jim Smith Chevrolet sells more cars simply because they give people more of the wide selection, dependable service, and big savings they want. So see the Jim Smith Chevrolet nearest you. You'll like doing business with number one. I'm sure of it. And welcome back to Mikey Stadium, where Rutgers leads Army by the score of 10 to nothing. Here in the second quarter, Doug Giesler will kick it off for the Scarlet Knights. And the Black Knights of Army looking to get something going here offensively. They have struggled since midway in the first quarter. Our, excuse me, Giesler with a short kick. It's taken by Mayweather at the 15. He's to the 20, bolts across the 30-yard line. And up to the 32. You know what I like about Mayweather is he's always doing a lot of north and south running. In that particular instance, heading south. But as fancy as he can look sometimes, because his legs are going in all directions, he's always moving up the field. That's very key in a running back style. That last Rutgers drive, eight plays, 71 yards, 2 minutes, 45 seconds off the clock. And again, 50-50. Four runs, four passes. First down for Army. Cadets at their own 32, and this is Mooney back to throw, fires, and it 
Jones almost caught. It would have been a big gainer for the cadets. Mark Charette, the tight end. Oh, he was open. That's a big play for them, especially when they've been pounding the ground, pounding the ball on the ground in first down as we take a look at the replay, and you'll see how open Charette is. Mooney doesn't get him the football. He's got to lead him out there a little bit. If he does, that could be a touchdown. Well, I think you've got to give Craig, uh, credit to both uh, Darren Sellis and Derek Baker for being around the football, but I think you're right. If the ball had been thrown the way it should have, that would have been a completion. And maybe a touchdown. Second down and ten. And oh. Mooney still has the football. Executes well. He is banged down at the 37. Derek Baker on the tackle for Rutgers. And a pickup of about four. And it will be third down and five. Actually, five-yard pickup. Third down and five for Army. You know, you, we raised the question earlier about Morel Savoy. When is he going to throw the football? Or can he throw the football? Obviously, Coach Jim Young would prefer to have Mark Mooney as long as he's healthy in there because he knows at least he can put the ball in the air. He's a confident kid. He really is. No, she was a Mooney slips down. Had running room and then fell to the turf at the 42-yard line. Spidell was zeroing in on him, but... It is short of first down yardage. Here on the replay, we talked a little bit about the turf. It is AstroTurf, and it can get slippery, particularly where those lines are, and that time that was a line tackle. Bit Rambush into kick for Army. It's off the side of his foot and out of bounds. So a poor kick by Rambush, who uh, doesn't uncork too many of those, and Rutgers will have the football at their own 40-yard line. A 19-yard punt after a couple of 50-plus yarders for Bet Rambush and gives Rutgers really the best field position starting a drive that it's had all afternoon. You know, Lou, just to finish the point about the turf, because we also remarked about it in terms of injury. Uh, when Torrey Crawford went down in the Wake Forest game, you can't necessarily uh, attribute it to the artificial turf, but somehow you've got to get the feeling when you see some of these replays that there's so little give in that carpet that what's got to give sometimes, unfortunately, is a knee joint. Ernie rolls out right side on first down, has time, fires long, and is incomplete. Intended for Brett Mersola, and it sails over his head. Chuck Williams on the coverage for Army. And Mersola was certainly wide open. He had his men beaten, Ernie just didn't deliver the football. No, and uh, where he put it was uh, gave Williams a chance to recover that time, Roger. Okay. Another thing, not only Rutgers uh, running multiple wideouts the last couple of games, uh, is that Scott Ernie is being set up in multiple drops, dropping straight back, a moving pocket, and also some quick release passes to try to give a different look to that Rutgers passing offense. And that is something new, Roger. I've never seen that before out of Rutgers. And the handoff to Stevens on the delay across the 40 up to the 43. Josh Haynes on the tackle for Army. And it will be third down and long for the Scarlet Knights. Josh Haynes doing a nice job, as you see, fighting off his blocker. There he goes. Fighting off for uh, Ivan Gurria, junior right guard for Rutgers. Rutgers two for six third down conversions. Four minutes remaining in this second quarter. Rutgers leads it 10 to nothing. And they have a third down and seven at their own 44. Ernie back to throw. Fires across the middle. And James Jenkins, the backup tight end, makes the catch for Rutgers. And that's the first down for the Scarlet Knights. Ernie Boyd on the tackle. Nice read that time by Scott Ernie. The linebacker cleared out. You know, they got so conscious of that rollout situation as Ernie made that slight roll to his right. The linebacker took his left flat, talking about the linebacker, which vacated the area where Bruce Campbell came to catch the pass. Good read that time by Scott Ernie and a good play called. First and 10, Rutgers in Army territory at the 48-yard line. I formation behind Scott Ernie. And now movement on the right side of the Rutgers line. It's the right tackle, Steve Tardy, who moved early, and this should back Rutgers up. I have a feeling it looked like taking a Scott Ernie took a lot of time. He might have called an audible at the line of scrimmage, and Tardy might not have picked up the signal. But it looked like Scott might have been trying to change the play, seeing something that uh, would have given Rutgers an advantage. A uh, second Rutgers penalty, uh, 15 yards. There you see at the top of your screen, Luke, that was you, Steve Tardy jumping up. Do you mean we could say that Tardy was early? You knew I was going to come up with you that. Could you could say that, that yes. Okay, But we won't. Uh, all right. Send the letters to Frank LaBono, folks. <laughs> First down and 10. Ernie back to throw, fires, and complete. Hit Jenkins. Right. Bad spot. Yeah, right in the, uh, between the 8 and the 2, but he didn't catch it. Bad spot. 
Second and 15. Second down. It's interesting. We talked about how Rutgers might settle down and take advantage of their superior size and physical strength and go with the running game, and now they appear to be opening it up uh, even more. We've uh, been made to be liars on a couple of occasions here today. You know, there were two big plays against BC last week where Rutgers caught BC in a blitz. Two big plays, one of them a scoring play, another one to set up the score, and the Army just hasn't sent anybody today. Ernie gives on the delay. Mike Body across midfield is to the 48, but didn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage, and it will be third down and very long. Tom Mathers is on the tackle for Army. You know, you mentioned that the Army has not blitzed because Army has been hurt by the blitz. As a matter of fact, in the Wake Forest game, as we take a look at the replay there, as Body is spilled, Army was hurt considerably by the Blitz in the Wake Forest game. Both touchdowns by Elkins were audibles against the Blitz. Here comes your four wideouts, two to each side. Actually, one of the tight ends is split out. Let's see if he goes underneath. Yay. Ernie to throw. Fires. It is incomplete. And obviously a mix-up for Rutgers that time. Marsolin was the closest man to the ball, but he really wasn't close at all as he was 15 yards behind the pass. It looked like Mersola uh, broke his pattern, some kind of a misread. Obviously Ernie looking to go downfield and Mersola broke the pattern off to the sidelines. Thought that there was a penalty marker on the play and now they see no call and Rutgers will go into punt formation. Two and a half remaining in this first quarter and Chance, excuse me, in this first half and Chance Connor is deep for Army at the 10 yard line. O'Connell has kicked twice today and 35-yard average, 36 was his long. That is below his seasonal average of 39.6. O'Connell, lots of time. And the kick sails out of bounds. And they should mark it inside the 20. And they do at the 17-yard line. That's where Army will have the ball first down and 10. You know, now you're getting into a situation of field position. Even though if Rutgers doesn't necessarily do anything with it, even if they don't, what they can do is pin Army deep. And with Army's style of offense, particularly right now, as banged up as they are, it makes it just that much tougher because you have to start so deep in your own territory. So now it becomes a game of attrition. Mark Mooney back in at quarterback for Army. And he gives, this is Mayweather, who carries the football across the 20-yard line. And a good pickup on first down as he's up near the 23. Carter Giles on the tackle for Rutgers along with Pat Udovich. But it is a good pickup, a pickup of seven, second down and three. Now both teams have all of their timeouts. I'm wondering if Rutgers right now might want to take a timeout here with Army deep in its own territory. Obviously not. Second down, three. Out of the wishbone. Mooney gives up the middle. This is Barth, who gets maybe a yard or two up near the 29-yard line. Frank, I guess you live by the bone and die by the bone, huh? Yeah, at West Point, they most certainly do. I talked with Jim Young during the week. I said, Coach, are you going to pull out all the stops? Are you going to run the reverses? Are you going to throw the bomb? And he looked at me square in the eye and said, no. Uh, why? Why Why would we want to do that? No. He says that's not the way to beat a good football team like Rutgers anyway. We are going to do what we do best, and that's run the bone. They will measure here for the first down, and it indeed is a Army first down. The cadets have the football at their own 27-yard line with one minute and 48 seconds remaining second quarter. That was a big first down for Army because it gets them out from the shadow of their own goal posts and gives them a chance to kill the clock in the first half, go in at halftime and regroup a bit down, only 10 nothing. Mooney keeps the football, now turns it upfield and spins across the 35, up to the 37-yard line. Again, Udovich is on the tackle, but it's a nice pickup by Mooney, and he did a real good job of reading the Rutgers defense that time. Deceptive yardage, though, here, Lou, because uh, Arm, uh, excuse me, Rutgers in a type of prevent defense, which means they haven't necessarily brought in extra defensive back, but they are playing it soft, knowing that Army probably can't hurt them for 80 yards. Mooney, six rushes for 29 yards. This is Mayweather. Up the middle, across the 40. Fox stops, 106. It is an Army first down. Carter Giles and Spidell also on the tackle. But still, as Frank mentioned, it takes time to move the ball now 60 yards 
And the, the clock's running as we're just about at one minute remaining in the first half. 60 yards to go for Army. Mooney back to throw. Looking, looking, now rolls out and is brought down. Picked up a yard on the carry, but Chris Evans was over there to bring Mooney down. Excellent, excellent coverage in the secondary that time. Derek Baker did a great job on Keltner, and they wouldn't let the tight end off the line of scrimmage. Good job by the linebacker as well. We take a look at Mark Mooney as we have a timeout on the field called by Army. That's their first. They have two left. And Mooney uh, limping as we're coming off the field. Here's the replay. Now all you see is Mooney looking downfield. You don't see the coverage. If you did see downfield, what you would have seen was Derek Baker all over Keltner and the tight end still trying to get off the line of scrimmage. Good defensive job that time by the backers and secondary for the Scarlet Knights. There's the injured uh, Tory Crawford out three to four weeks uh, with that injury. was fouled in the Wake Forest game, a game which Wake Forest won here at Mikey Stadium. Well, that was a tough ball game. Uh, Army was leading until about four minutes left to go in the in the ball game, and Matt Elkins, the quarterback for the, uh, excuse me, Mike Elkins, for Wake Forest, did a great job. Uh, there's some of the artillery that Army brought with them. They may use that in the second half, Roger. What do you I, think? I think they would like to use it in the first half, <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth. Let's set the scene. 41 seconds remaining, second quarter, and Rutgers leads it 10 nothing. In case you just joined us, Rutgers scored on a 24-yard field goal by Carmen Sclafani, and then a two-yard touchdown run by Curtis Stevens. One thing on that last play, Mooney didn't have time to set up. He was being chased all over the, all over the backfield. There's a second down and eight, and the give is off tackle. Barth carries. Barth carries for Army. He's across the 45-yard line up to the 47, so it's a good pickup. Third down and two, but the big thing here is the clock, which is winding down 25 seconds. You know, we saw Torrey Crawford, and he's injured with a uh, with a bad knee. We'll see the play here, and then I want to bring up one very quick point. On the third down play, they try to go off tackle. John Barth again on the carry. 13 seconds, the clock stops Joe Savoy on the tackle for Rutgers, and it is short. No, it is first down. It is a Army first down, I believe. That's the signal. And Army will call timeout as you take a look at the replay. So there is a timeout on the field and obviously a break in the action. 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And the score is Rutgers 10, Army nothing. Welcome to STS Car Service Centers. At STS, we feature the new Michelin Sport EPX Performance Radios for foreign and domestic cars. Michelin all-season high-tech radios, like the Sport EPX, are the choice of discriminating tire buyers. New Jersey is driving to STS Car Service Centers. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. There's a look at the sellout crowd here at Mikey Stadium. It is homecoming here today for Army. And the cadets trailing 10-0 in the first half, but still very much in this football game. They have a first down, and Mooney rolls out and gets away from a tackler. Still has time, directing traffic, and takes it out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Three seconds remaining in the half. Oh, a tremendous individual effort that time by, uh, by Mooney to escape the defensive lineman. And credit goes as we take a look at Mooney. He's got a little bit more time now. Now being chased and uh, getting away, can't get anybody open, and that's because Gene Austin and Derek Baker were back in the secondary doing their job. Yes, and he was looking to go deep that time too, Roger. He was looking to put the ball in the end zone, which is very rare in a pass play by, uh, by Army. And I have some passing statistics that I'll bring up in the second half about Army because it's very interesting. All right, this will be the last play of this first half. And Mooney keeps and runs it himself, has a good gainer. Mooney on the gainer. But that will do it. And the first half comes to a conclusion. So, that's the end of the first half. Your score is Rutgers 10, Army nothing. Back with a look at the first half and second half action in just a moment. 
Bacardi Motors, the largest retail Chrysler Plymouth dealer in America. Selection, low prices, plus 1.9% financing or rebates from Chrysler. Bacardi has 2,500 Chryslers, Plymouths, Peugeots, van conversions, and used cars. With more arriving daily, call for instant credit. Bacardi Motors, the car giant, guarantees we'll beat any deal in the U.S. or you get the car free. Mention this station and get a free gift. Come to Bacardi Motors, Route 22 West, Greenbrook, 752-7373. Welcome back to Mikey Stadium. Lou Bragno joined by Roger Cohen and Frank Labono as Rutgers leads Army 10-0. Doug Giesler ready to kick off for Rutgers. And he kicks off moving right to left on your screen. This is Mayweather inside the 5. He's to the 10, to the 20. Across the 30 and brought down there. So Army will have a first and 10 at the long 31-yard line. Very quickly in the first half, Rutgers scored on two scoring drives, eight plays, 71 yards, two minutes, 45 seconds, four runs and four passes in the drive. Rutgers kicks a field goal, it's 3 nothing. Second drive, eight plays, 71 yards, and uh, they lead up by the score of 10 nothing. Here's a look at some of the first half statistics. Total yards, Rutgers in command. Mark Mooney is in at quarterback for Army. And he still has the football and takes it across the 35 for a pickup of about five yards on the play. Second down and five coming up for Army. Roger, uh, in that first half, how did Scott Ernie do? He was certainly doing a great job. Well, he last started week. off one for six in the first quarter, then came back and hit eight out of his next 12, a 153 yards. So it's not that Scott hasn't been throwing the ball. He has, Rutgers just hasn't been going to that, that multiple wideout situation. Excuse me, Mooney with the pass as he hits Charette. And that's an Army first down. Well, all right. I'd like to see that. Let's uh, talk about Army a little bit. Play selection in the first half. Rutgers right on. 50-50, 18 runs, 18 passes, 36 total plays. Army, 31 out of 34 rushing plays. And, uh, Frank, no major surprises with the cadets. That is the problem. There is no surprise there. We'll get into it more in a minute, Roger. First down and 10, and the give off tackle. John Barth carries the football. Rutgers plays it well at midfield. Maybe a pickup of two. Again, it is Pat Yudovich on the tackle. Army has to start mixing up the plays just a little bit more. I know they're a wishbone offense. I know the wishbone is tailored to uh, running the football. As we take a look at the replay there, there's Barth with a pretty good hard run. But surprise is also a very important element in any football game, and it most certainly is here. Second down and eight for Army at the Rutgers 48. Mooney keeps pitches outside. Mayweather crushed as soon as he gets the ball. Darren Sellers comes up and makes the hit. Sellers, as you see him there, number 37. That's his responsibility as Mayweather took the pitch moving from left to right. And Sellers simply didn't move. And Mayweather ran right to him as we take a look at that play again. You'll see Sellers. There he is just waiting for him and putting the shoulder to him. Roger, because there's no surprise there. I play defensive back against the wishbone, and surprise is an important element. You have to respect the pass if the wishbone is going to be effective. Third and six. Mooney back to throw in trouble. Evans brings him down. Chris Evans and Pat Yudovich combining on the tackle, but it was Evans who made the play, and Army will be forced into punt formation. Third and long situation is a terrible situation for a wishbone offense. Here's if we take a look at it. There's Mooney rolling to his left. Here comes Evans, grabs him by the shirt, and brings him down. Beautiful play by Evans, but you can't throw on third and long. You've got to throw every once in a while on first down, even with the wishbone. McQueen at the 20. 25, shakes the tackler, gets outside and across the 30-yard line. Bit Rambush with another fine punt. He's punted four times for a 41.7-yard average. That one, a 34-yard kick, not one of his better ones. Rutgers will have it first down and 10 on their own 34-yard line. Do you realize on the year, Lou, Army has 17 rushing TDs and averages 315 yards a game. They have three passing TDs and average only 72, 72 yards a game. Once again, the wishbone, a running offense, it's what they do best, but you've got to have a little bit more balance than that. You've got to strive for it. You just must. Two receivers split out left side. Ernie Byers has the back coming out of the backfield. It was actually not the back, but it was Eric Young, the split end. He cannot hold on. 
and it will be second down and 10. That's happened a couple of times today. We saw James Jenkins, a tight end in the first half, drop a ball that hit him right in the letters. Eric Young, who had just such a super, super game uh, last week, also dropping the football uh, just now on a pass, really, that he should have had. So Rutgers just not looking as sharp offensively as they did last week against D.C. But that's also an awful lot to ask. Twelve and a half remaining, third quarter. Rutgers with split backs behind Ernie. And the give is to Henderson. Henry Henderson with a fine run. He's across the 45-yard line and has a Rutgers first down. Nice job by the left side of Rutgers' offensive line. They just caved in the defense, and it was just, just magnificent. Here's the replay. Now, you look, they, look at the size of this hole. I tell you, Lou, I might even... Uh, think about running through a hole like that looks easy it's just not that easy after this play we'll show you the Lambert trophy voting here in the east Rutgers up there of course Syracuse is the top team this is the give again Henderson dances his way across midfield to the 48 yard line Troy Lingley on the tackle now in that Lambert Trophy voting, Syracuse, of course, has defeated Rutgers this year and Penn State. The Orange Men are sitting in the catbird seat there. They defeated everybody. Yeah. Big. 6-0, and and they have 60 total votes. Penn State uh, second, and Rutgers is third in the Lambert Trophy voting. That's the highest the Scarlet Knights have been in some time. And we have an injured player down on the field at midfield for Rutgers. And it looks to be Curtis Stevens. He's sitting up now and appears to be okay. 12 minutes even remaining in this third quarter. Rutgers 10 on the nothing. Rutgers on the drive. You know, Lou, right now it looks like Rutgers is again re-establishing their physical superiority. If you watch their, the way they're blocking right now, they're caving in the whole side of the line. Even the tight end, Campbell, but a great block and the, and the last long run by Henderson. They're really coming right at them right now. They're big on offense. They're very physical, and they're taking advantage of that. Second down and about six for the Scarlet Knights at the Army 47. Here's the pitch. This is Henderson who scoots through and around the end. He's finally forced out of bounds inside the 35 chance. Connor finally gets over on the angle, but not before Henderson picks up another Rutgers first down. I'll tell you, number 27, Henry Henderson, uh, uh, looking pretty good for a guy who has had four midterm examinations this week. Eight attempts for 74 yards as he picks and goes to the outside, making it look very, very easy. You know, when you have a good quick back like that, Roger, all you have to do as a lineman sometimes is get a screen block. You don't have to wipe anybody out. Get in the way and let the back, a quick back like Henderson, just scoot through there. First and 10 at the 35. One back behind Ernie, Eric Young in motion, and the give is up the middle. And it is Dan Lipset on the carry. Picks up just a couple of Josh Haynes on the stop for Army. And another player down. This time it is an Army player. Looks, looks like, like he's Mike holding, Glover. Looks like he's holding his left knee, too. Yeah, Mike Glover. He's had a problem with that leg, uh, Roger. He's had it all year, as a matter of fact. He was counted on to be one of their better defensive linemen. Has really not played up to par, and I think it's because of that injury. He did not have spring practice at all this year in order to rest that knee, but it still has troubled him throughout the season. All right, and there's a break in the action here. 11 minutes, 34 seconds while they attend to Mike Lover. We will take a break. 11.34 remaining third quarter of the score is Rutgers 10 and Army nothing. I remember when my father started Spitalier Furniture. He based his business on quality and integrity. He offered fine furniture at the lowest prices with incomparable service. That was 82 years ago, but Spitalary Furniture hasn't changed. My son Skeeter and I still offer the best furniture at the lowest prices and service only a hard-working father and son team can deliver. spitalary has been around for three generations, and Skeeter's son Tony will see that the tradition continues because Spitalary Furniture cares about tradition. There's a look at some of the fans here at Army. No, she does not, but she's probably rooting for the cadets, as most of the fans here are. Rutgers with a second down and seven at the Army 33. Here's the pitch to Henderson, turns it back inside, gets to the 30 before Army bunches it up. Schretzman on the tackle, and a pickup of three, and a third down play coming up for Rutgers. It'll be third and five. Nice job by Schretzman that time, held his ground, 
body under control. They used to drum that into our heads, body under control. Get back into the flow of the play here. We'll take a look at it. Look at Schretzman, fight off the block of the tight end, get in on a piece of the tackle. Nice job by the outside linebacker. Third down and five. Twin receivers split out. Right side, McQueen and Cobb. Eric Young is in the slot. And Ernie back to throw. Fires has McQueen across the middle. He's still on his feet and tiptoes his way down to the 15-yard line. Yale Peebles on the tackle for Army. And Dave Burdan is holding his head not because, or his helmet, not because he's hurt, but because he said, my man, I missed that tackle. Let's take a look at that play again. Good second effort. Here's McQueen coming across. And he got away from Berdan. That was the man who had him by the legs and lost him. You know, they're playing, we're talking about Army now, the Black Knights without one of their senior leaders inside linebacker, Ray Griffiths. And I think it's hurt them as they found that soft spot in the middle where Griffiths would ordinarily be. First and ten for Rutgers at the Army 15. Here's Lipset trying to angle around the left side and is brought down. Picks up about two. Schretzman again on the tackle for the cadets. You know, it doesn't really matter whether they throw Bruce Campbell at Tretzman or in that case Henry Henderson. Tretzman is shedding those blockers and making the play. You know, he's really come on. Early in the year, he was not one of their bigger hitters, let's say, on defense. They counted more on Lingley and Griffiths, their inside backers. But in the last couple of weeks, Tretzman has really come on. As a matter of fact, had two sacks last week against Colgate and seems to be getting stronger and stronger by the week. This will be Rutgers' 10th play of this drive. Consistency. Second down and about eight at the 13. Ernie throws. Man out of the backfield is young. Puts on a move. Is, is inside the five-yard line. Has a Rutgers first down at the three. Chance Connor finally covering up. Well, Connor had the coverage that time. They were in an inverted defense, which means the safety is supposed to come up for the short flat, and the cornerback dropped deep. That time, Connor was just a fraction of a second slow getting over, and that makes for a good game. First and goal for Rutgers at the Army two-and-a-half yard line. <laughs> Scarlet Knights already lead by the score of 10-0. Full half backfield behind Scott Ernie. This is Stevens, and he's near the goal line, but I don't believe he's in. Curtis says, give me it. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> Same play that they scored on the last time, the power eye formation, but running away from the power eye, if you will. In a sense, it is by direction, but by design it isn't, because what they do is they cross the uh, opposite halfback in front to get him in there as an additional blocker, and then the eye back plows right in there. That's that's good play calling by Dick Anderson. Looks It's a good looking play on the goal line. Second down, goal. Inside the one. Stevens. Touchdown, Rutgers. Same play. <laughs> exactly the same play. What they're doing is they're firing the fullback in. The eye back is following in behind him to get that extra back in there and then bring Stevens in behind him and he gets to choose any number of holes. You know, some people, uh, we talked about it earlier, might say, boring, but you know, it works. Like you said, you dance with what Brung is, we take a look at it, and there really is no reason Rutgers has confidence in the offense that it's running, and if the play has worked before, you go back to it again, especially when you're so close, and especially when you've got someone like Curtis Stevens running the ball so well. Why take a chance and put the ball in the air? Why take a chance on a pitch? Slafani in to kick the extra point. The kick is up. It is good. Timeout on the field. Eight minutes, 23 seconds remaining. Third quarter. The score, Rutgers 17, Army nothing. Welcome to STS Car Service Centers. At STS, we feature the new Michelin Sport EPS performance radios for foreign and domestic cars. Michelin all-season high-tech radios, like the Sport EPX, are the choice of discriminating tire buyers. New Jersey is driving to STS Car Service Centers. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. New Jersey is driving to STS. Driving. at Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York, where Rutgers is leading Army by the score of 17 to nothing as we are just about midway through the third quarter. Doug Giesler tees the ball up at the 40-yard line. And he will...
will kick off. Again, fairly short kick. Mayweather takes it at the five, drops the football, now picks it up. He's at the 10, and he will be brought down at the 13-yard line. In on the play, Jeff Newman. Lou, you know what I was thinking of? Army needs a big play offensively and a Rutgers turnover to get back in the ball game. One thing Army does not need is to have the opening kickoff, or not the opening kickoff, or that kickoff return muff. There's the RU drive. 11 plays, 67 yards, 4 minutes, 17 seconds. Eight runs, three passes that time for Rutgers. So the Knights staying on the ground more often than not. If Mooney keeps the football, picks up a couple, gets up to about the 15, 16-yard line. Let's face it, Rutgers can afford to play conservatively now at this point. Unfortunately, Army cannot, but they are so conditioned to do so, Lou. Quite frankly, I don't know what they can do. In the past, their razzle-dazzle play, if you will, their big play has been the reverse. It worked very well against Boston College. They did not use it last week against Colgate. Second down, seven. Mooney keeps the football, runs right in to Spidell, who brings him down at the 19-yard line. It'll be about five yards shy of the first down yardage, third down and five. Defensively, that's the kind of mismatch you want. Spidell weighs about 232 pounds, Mooney about 180. Army only two of nine on third down conversions this afternoon. They're staring in the face of another one right here. Third down, five. Wishbone behind Mooney. And he keeps the football, now turns it upfield, and he will not have first down yardage. Chuck Paw on the tackle for the Scarlet Knights, a penalty marker on the play. You know, interestingly also, Louis, they keep running to the short side of the field as well. To their right, a face mask penalty against Rutgers, a break for Army, but that's still not going to mask what the problem is. Army right now so conservative. Not only are they not throwing the ball, not only are they not running the reverse, but they're running to the short side of the field and they are not even using any misdirection. Let's take a look and see if we can see the penalty on the replay. There's Mooney and there, okay, is the, uh, and the flag came in right away. Number 58 looked like he got a piece of the mask. Chuck Paw. Chuck Paw, yep. Got a only, big paw up there and got a piece of the mask. Only the third Rutgers penalty, total of 20 yards. Doesn't matter whether Dick Anderson is winning small or winning big. He's concerned. That's a, that's a dumb penalty. It's a bad penalty. First down and 10 at the 27-yard line. Mooney gives to Barth, who bolts across the 30. Hey, he got a good pickup on first down. Picked up about five or six. Bob Spidell on the tackle. And what happens, that was a third down play where the penalty occurred. Instead of Rutgers, instead of Rutgers getting the ball in good field position, it gives Army a first down and a chance to continue with the football. Second down, call it five at the 32. And again at Spark. And he's close to first down yardage. Had to get to the 37, and he may be just a yard shy. You know, as much yardage as the wishbone can pile up, you know, averaging over 315 yards a game on the ground, it is a terrible catch-up offense. And Rutgers right now can afford to lay back a little bit defensively and give Army the, 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 the 40, the 60, even the 70 yards, sometimes even if they score, because it's just so time-consuming. Everything is between the hash marks and up the field. Very slow, very slow to move up the field. And on the infrequent occasions when Army has gone to the air or attempted to go to the air, Lou and Frank, Rutgers has been putting had such good pursuit of the quarterback, Mooney really hasn't had time to set and throw the ball well. Third down and about a foot for Army. We say play action pass here and pass here, coach. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I would doubt it. <laughs> and they go up the middle of the park, and he has the Army first down as he dives ahead to the 40-yard line. So the cadets pick up the first with six minutes even remaining in the third quarter, and they have a little bit of a drive together here. I started at the point uh, a while ago, and I'll get to it quickly. As a defender, part of the difficulty of defending the wishbone is not only when you have good athletes running them down, but the deception part, the misdirection, and the threat of a pass. Right now, Army does not have that. And again, they go up the middle. And a tackle made at the 45-yard line. And a fumble, but recovered by Army. Peterson on the carry. And as you mentioned, Roger, he did fumble the football.
Actually, it was Barth who fumbled, and then Peterson recovered. Recovery. Great. So I thought they'd use Andy Peterson a little bit more. I thought his style would be suited to playing against a, a, a Rutgers type of defense. Well, he's had a hip pointer, so he too has been injured. Second down and two at the 48. This is Peterson. He has a first down. He's across midfield and down to the Rutgers 47. You know, Frank, you talk about defending. Rutgers now with a 17-point lead, 17-0 with just about five minutes remaining in this third quarter. Just maybe losing a little bit of that concentration up front because Army's offensive line seems to be moving moving uh, the Rutgers line out just a little bit. We've got an injured Rutgers player, in fact, two of them. Two of them down. Down. One is Derek Baker, who is getting up slowly, holding his arm. The other is Carter Giles, who also is getting up very slowly. As we take a look at that shot, you can see off to the left uh, that diagram at midfield, the Black Knight, as we see Giles running off. He seems to be all right. The players, the Rutgers players that I talked to last night said the painted parts of this super turf are as hard as concrete. And it's the truth. It is, certainly is. They're actually, and in cold weather it gets worse, they actually raise up out of the turf because of the paint on there. The difference in the way they contract, it's a different substance and they will actually raise up off the turf. And it can present some, some difficulties, not only for traction, running, tripping, but also for injuries. Army, first down and 10 at the Rutgers 47-yard line. Mooney oh, hears that reverse. Here's Jordan around the left side. Puts on a move. Still has the football and is brought out of bounds inside the 30. Uh, there it is. Now we see the reverse play. It is the Army big play. I tell you right now, they did not use it at all last week, and they waited until oh, just under five minutes left to play in the third quarter to use it here. Good play. I'd like to see it a little bit more off. Those two Army fans are very happy as we take a look at that play. And almost doesn't count, but you'll see an almost clip right at the end of this play. I believe it was Army's number 12 coming in. You'll see it at the back. As he's, there you see it, 71, blocking from the rear. That could have been called. Oh, and it. Mooney keeps, still has the football, turns it upfield. A nice stiff arm and carries Sean Washington out of bounds across the 15-yard line. And Mooney's a tough kid, I'll tell you, for 182 pounders, although he looks like he's down there. See that bruise on his elbow? You know what that is? That's a turf burn. That's how hard and abrasive this turf is. You could just see it. Now you can't see it as he's laid flat. It looks like it might be a rib injury, but that's how hard this turf is. I'll tell you, when I played on it, I even used to use golf gloves because whenever you stretched out, you could actually skin your hand on it. It's, it's a little bit like sandpaper. It's really very abrasive. Mooney, 14 rushes for 66 yards on the game. Army, Army cannot afford to lose him or else the boy just doesn't have the experience. Nice move, nice straight arm. And just showing Rock Washington just putting a good, solid, clean, hard hit on him. He's Pat Yudovich into the game and Gurria, Paul Gurria comes out. It is first down and 10. And Savoy, Morel Savoy is in quarterback. Savoy gives, still has the football, actually. Nice fake. Picks me out. As he's across the 10 yard line. Gene Austin on the tackle for Rutgers. Is this a tough situation or what for a really untested sophomore to come in? Your team having its first sustained drive of the day, trailing by 17 points late in the third quarter. They need points here, and they've got to count on their quarterback to get it for them. Tough. Second down, about four for Army. They're inside the Rutgers 10. Savoy keeps, turns it in, it's blasted down at the five-yard line, but has enough, I believe, for an Army first down. Derek Baker came in and really hammered Savoy, but he does pick up the first. Hey, the sophomore looks pretty good, though. Looks very gutsy. Nice read that time, and good cut to get into the secondary. Defensive coordinator Otto Niger can't be too happy about this. You like to retain the shutout. Your defense has played so well throughout this game. First and goal, Army at the four-yard line. Out of the wishbone, Savoy keeps, and he struggles down to the two-yard line. And it will be second down and goal. That was one of those turf tackles, Lou. Actually, he was not really brought down by a man. And we're going to take a look at it, the replay. Now watch here. Now he's got a little hole. Here he goes. Oh, and there he goes. Looks like he may have been tripped a little bit or something and slipped on the turf. It's not actually a slip. It's Sometimes the traction is actually so good 
that when you plant and you put your foot down, there is no give, and you really can't anticipate that. Well, the you best thing that happens to you is you fall down. The worst thing is that you hurt yourself. No, yeah. Third down, a goal at the one. It is Mayweather, and the cadets are on the board. The crowd loves it. They've, they've got to love it. That was a good-looking drive. Hey, how many passes did we have on that uh, El Zilcho? That's right, and that's what Army does best. They've got six here, but that took up a lot of time. Keith Walker in to attempt the extra point. The kick is up. It is good. So, two minutes, 56 seconds remaining. Third quarter, a break of the action at Mikey Stadium. The score, Rutgers 17 and Army 7. I remember when my father started Spitalier Furniture. He based his business on quality and integrity. He offered fine furniture at the lowest prices with incomparable service. That was 82 years ago, but Spitalary Furniture hasn't changed. My son Skeeter and I still offer the best furniture at the lowest prices and service only a hard-working father and son team can deliver. spitalary has been around for three generations, and Skeeter's son Tony will see that the tradition continues because Spitalary Furniture cares about tradition. Here's a look at the crowd here at Mikey Stadium. A little more enthused now that the cadets drove right down the field. The drive, 13 plays all on the ground. 86 yards, 5 minutes, 25 seconds. Let's take a look at the touchdown. It's uh, just a little bit of misdirection there. They faked to the fullback one way, came back to Mayweather in the other direction. You know, the key play in that drive, Lou, I think, the face mask penalty. It looked like Rutgers had Army stop on a third down situation with Army deep in their own territory. Face mask penalty gave Army a first down, kept the drive alive. Bad penalty. Very, very bad penalty. And uh, I, Lou, I think that Rutgers is going to have to score. I think a lot of people are going to be looking to see. Let's, if this is a good Rutgers football team, they're going to bounce back from this Army score and put one on the board themselves. Whether they keep stay on the ground or put it up in the air. Bit Rambush will kick off for Army. It's a line drive kick taken by Young at the 5. He's at the 10. To the 20 and dropped down hard on the play for Army. Daryl Sherb, number 22, and Robert Duffy. And there's a look at the cadets. Roger, this, this is an Army team that just doesn't know how to quit, and they score late. You had an interesting statistic that you may want to bring about because uh, well, it's, the fourth, it's a real interesting one. The fourth quarter is Army's best quarter. They scored 57 points in the fourth quarter uh, total in their six games this season, and by far that is their best quarter. Rutgers, first down and 10. Scarlet Knights at their own 21. They lead at 17-7. 2.50 remaining in the third. Ernie gives up the middle. This is Body, Mike Body on the carry across the 25-yard line. Lingley again on the tackle for the cadets. You know, in the pregame, Roger, you mentioned that uh, Dick Anderson wanted to improve Rutgers' conditioning in the fourth quarter. That is not a problem with Army. These kids work out so hard before, after, and during the football season. You know they're in good shape. As a matter of fact, it has a reverse effect at times where it can be a negative because it's so hard to get their big linemen even bigger because they're always working out doing a lot of things that cadets have to do here at West Point. Jenkins, the tight end, in motion on a second down and six. And they go up the middle. This is Stevens. He's close to the 30-yard line. He'll be a little bit shy. They'll mark it at the 29. And it's going to be a third down and three for the Scarlet Knights. I can hear some of the Rutgers fans now. Why don't you put it up in the air? Why don't you put it up in the air? Well, as, we said, as we've said throughout this ballgame, Rutgers has had success today with a balanced attack, especially on the last drive, 11 plays, 8 runs, uh, 3 passes. They've been moving the ball well on the ground, and of course that also takes up a lot of time, which Rutgers would love to do, just kill the clock. Third down, 2. third down, has a receiver, Young makes the catch and he has the first down, fumbles the football and it is recovered by Rutgers at the 38 yard line. 
Yale Peebles on the hit for Army. One of the things we talked about in the opening of the game in terms of things Rutgers has done well this year, they really haven't turned the ball over at that much at all. No interceptions today for Scott Ernie. He has three on the season overall. Rutgers has fumbled the ball three times today. However, they haven't lost a fumble. Just saw Jim Young on the Army sideline. Pacing a little bit. Has to be concerned. Under a minute and a half left in the third quarter, and his team still trails by 10 points. First and 10 for Rutgers at the 38. Ernie rolls out left side, fires. McQueen makes the catch near midfield, and it is a Rutgers first down. So that's that soft coverage again. You know, Army was very concerned about two things defensively against Rutgers. Number one, the balance. We have seen the balance. And number two, the speed of the Rutgers wide receivers. When you're concerned about the speed of another team's receivers, you've got to play the soft defense. But that also gives the offense something, that underneath pattern. Rutgers is taking advantage of that. That's good coaching. They've picked that out, and that's the way it should be. 13 out of 23 is Scott Ernie in this football game as we approach the end of the third quarter. Ernie gives to Stevens who goes off tackle and stretches ahead to the 46 yard line. Pick up of about three and again Lingley on the tackle. That time Rutgers starting with two wide outs as we take a look at Dick Anderson to the right side. Young in motion from left to right and Rutgers going with a simple dive play. Ernie by the way is 13 for 23, 193 yards. He's used seven different receivers as we take a look at the play. There's Young in motion. And there's Stevens just straight ahead. On this second down play, there's a push-up competition going on in the end zone between <laughs> the Rutgers and Army cheerleaders. Quite the battle. <laughs> Ernie pitches. This is Body. Great run by Body as he heads into the open field. Finally brought down inside the 15-yard line. Chuck Williams saved a touchdown. Well, good open field tackle, but what a fantastic individual effort by Mike Body. The play, the play designed to go left, jumped over one tackler, made a quick move, and then broke into the clear on the right side. Here it is, the play designed to go left, quick cut there, leaps a pile. He's got an open field, one man to beat, good angle of pursuit by Williams, finally drags him down, but what a great job by Mike Body. Okay, and on the 34-yard run, the end of the third quarter has come about. We've played three at Mikey Stadium. The score, Rutgers 17 and Army 7. I remember when my father started Spindler Furniture. He based his business on quality and integrity. He offered fine furniture at the lowest prices with incomparable service. That was 82 years ago, but Spindler Furniture hasn't changed. My son Skeeter and I still offer the best furniture at the lowest prices and service only a hard-working father and son team can deliver. Spitalary's been around for three generations, and Skeeter's son, Tony, will see that the tradition continues, because Spitalary Furniture cares about tradition. Rutgers has the football first down and 10 at the Army 13, and penalty markers on the play as we begin the fourth quarter. The score is Rutgers 17, Army 7. Lou Brogno jo joined by Roger Cohen and Frank Labono and the rest of the TKR Cable Sports crew. Talk about consistency before we even get a playoff. In the fourth quarter, Rutgers on a drive having the big mo, the momentum, and Rutgers gets called for illegal procedure before we even have a kick run off the clock. Oh, coaches hate it too, Roger, especially when you're in deep like this. We talked about it a bit in the first quarter. You need positive yardage when you get in tight. You'll take two yards, three yards. It doesn't have to be the big gainer, but you must have positive yardage because it just changes the percentages and the possibilities for the next play. Again, a lot of movement in the backfield for the Scarlet Knights, but they do set. First down, 15. Here's the give. This is Mike Body again, running hard across the 15. Brought down at the 14-yard line. Picks up about four on the play. Second down and 11. George Godfrey on the tackle for the Cadets. To show how far Rutgers has come, isn't it nice that Rutgers can take out a runner like Henry Anderson? And really, you know, yes, you're losing speed with Mike Body, but in terms of toughness and just general ability, you're not losing anything at all. Ernie fires incomplete. 
pass was there before Young turned around and it was on the wrong side of him and never really had a chance. Well, Third down coming up. He threw it behind Young. He was open and it was still a catchable ball though. A little bit more concentration on Young's part. We'll take a look at it in the replay and you'll see here from the overhead shot. There's Young. Is that Young in motion there? Yes, it is. Little, little kind of slip screen, they call it. And that could have been six points. The ball was just slightly behind. Still should have been caught. And I think that's the big difference between Rutgers' performance, which has been pretty good and very well balanced offensively against Army. But between this week and last week, that would have been caught, and that would have been a touchdown. There's a look at the snap in on third down. Ernie fires across the middle. Catch is made. Ryan Cobb inside the five. Fumble. Uh, no, they're saying that Cobb was down, I oh, believe. He was down. Good call. Good call by the official. Ernest Boyd made the hit and jarred the ball loose, but Cobb was already down, and it should and could be enough for a Rutgers first down. I actually thought Cobb had kind of put the ball down himself. I don't know whether we'll get the shot we'll, from the we'll overhead. see the replay. Is the overhead shot Single coverage, a slant pattern, crossing pattern over the middle, and it looks like a good call by the official. The ground caused the fumble, which actually can't be a fumble. First down and goal for Rutgers at the Army two-yard line. Four runs, four passes on this particular drive for the Scarlet Knights. Full house backfield. Stevens trying to find his way into the end zone. Is brought down at the one interesting play as he kind of put his left hand out and tried to guide his way past the offensive lineman. So Godfrey would have none of that, the linebacker, and he really put, a, put the wood to him. There's a look at the third quarter statistics. As you can see, Rutgers is handily ahead in total yards. And, uh, of course, yards passing Army with only 24, even though Army has had the better rushing. All right, we're going to take a little wager here. Do you think Rutgers will come back with the same play? When they've been down inside the five-yard line the last three times, that's the play they've gone well, to. It's certainly the same formation anyway, Roger. <laughs> and as far as Army's concerned, they really need to keep Rutgers out of the end zone here. Henderson uh, untouched. untouched as he goes in. And i probably put the curse on Army on that one. Well, obviously, Army was looking for the same play. You know, we were looking for it. And what do they do? They go with the cross Boy, motion. are we dumb. Well, uh, that's why we're up here, Roger. And the coaches have to take all the heat down there. Well, you guys can speak for yourself. <laughs> the Rutgers scores the touchdown. It is 23-7. They'll line up for the extra point. You know, Dick Curl has taken a, a couple of bad raps because of his supposed. We take a look at the play of his conservative offensive style. Dick, the offensive coordinator. Of Jack McNeil from BC thought that Rutgers, the kick curl had him wired. He was just anticipating everything defensively that BC did. Again, I think Rutgers simply outthought Army on that play. Kick is up. It is good. 13 minutes, five seconds remaining, fourth quarter. The score, Rutgers 24, Army 7. <laughs> Welcome to STS Car Service Centers. At STS, we feature the new Michelin Sport EPX performance radios for foreign and domestic cars. Michelin all-season high-tech radios, like the Sport EPX, are the choice of discriminating tire buyers. New Jersey is driving to STS Car Service Centers. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. There's a look at the cadets, one of the cadets on the sideline, warming up. Army trailing 24-7. Rutgers has scored on four of their last five drives in this game. They are taking control offensively. That was number 17, Brian McWilliams, a plebe quarterback. Very high on him, though, Roger. They're really expecting big things out of him. We may see him here in the fourth period. Mayweather at the 20, 25, and it's spun down. Coming up to make the play for Rutgers, Scott Blanche, number 87. And Army will have the football. There's the RU drive. Ten plays, 79 yards, four minutes, 45 seconds, and six runs, four passes. So uh, pretty close. And as we mentioned, four out of the last five. Four out of the last five drives. Remember we talked at the beginning of the game about consistency last week against BC. Five consecutive scoring drives. This is a real good Rutgers football team. Savoyan at quarterback. Back in at quarterback, I should say. Army trying to pick themselves up here now as the give is up the middle to Bart. And he has good yardage. 
about four yards on the play. You know, that was a good hole that time by the offensive line. Barth has got to learn with his learn to run with his head up and use his eyes. That time, if he would have looked just one hole to his left, he could have had even more yardage. Even though you're down in the game, you're still, you're still in it. Over 12 minutes left to play. You've got to run with your head up. Run to daylight. Ball marked at the 35, second down of four. And Barth again met by Yudovich and driven back. He picks up about two. But it will be another third down opportunity coming up for Army. You know, next week, Rutgers has a very, very big football game down in Nashville against Vanderbilt. Uh, and the Commodores are a tough team. They're in a very tough conference. They're playing at home. Nearly knocked off Alabama a couple of weeks ago. It's nice that Rutgers can rest someone like Scott Miller, the, June, uh, the uh, sophomore defensive tackle for the game next week against Vanderbilt, not having to use him today against Army. Third down and two. And this is a first down for the cadets, Savoy. It was Savoy yeah. carrying the football. Did a nice job on the read that time. Again, the quarterback is so important. Here we're going to take a look at it in the replay. Now watch the quarterback. Here's the option. Fake to the fullback, arrive the fullback, option the defensive end. If the end leans outside towards the pitchman, you keep it cut inside him and get as much yardage as you can. That is the triple option threat. Well done by Savoy. First and 10 at the 44. Savoy gives good execution by Savoy because he had me faked again, but he Barth did give to Barth, okay. and he got to midfield. You know, it's interesting, Lou. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, and it's a, it looks like it's going to be close to another first down. Not quite. No, it's short about three yards. But, you know, what's interesting is that I'm so used to, at this point now, seeing the option. After a while, you get you get a kind of a feel for it. But that's why it is dangerous and, and, and uh, presents certain difficulties for defenses if you haven't seen it a lot. Ball at midfield. Savoy pitches, looking to pitch, actually keeps and is knocked out of bounds. In Rutgers territory at the 47-yard line, Derek Baker came over to make the tackle. Frank, Rutgers up 24-7, 11 minutes the clock stopped because the play took, went out of bounds. Uh, as we'll take a look at it, and Savoy going back to the huddle. Uh, why don't you put the ball in the air? Why don't, are, you, are you giving up on the ball game, or do you want to give Savoy, who just may be the quarterback the rest of the season for Army, are you giving him repetitions on the option? Well, you know, I asked Jim Young that very same question, and he said, Frank, we're having enough trouble right now pitching the ball out, much less throwing it down the field, and that was his answer. Give up the middle. This is Barth, excuse me, not Barth, but Peterson on the carry. He's down to the 42-yard line. Army this half, 22 runs and one pass. You know, Roger, you brought up an interesting... Uh, situation as far as Rutgers is, is concerned. Next week they play Vanderbilt. But Frank, Army uh, may have uh, the, the toughest part, and as far as they're concerned, maybe the most important part of their schedule still to come with games against Air Force and against, of course, Navy. And uh, they have a lot of tough ball games left. No, no doubt about that. We'll get into it after this play. Ref. This is Barth up the middle. Picks up a couple. So they, they know that they have to be competitive against certain teams. Right now, with the way things are going, it's difficult for them to compete against the like of Rutgers. We mentioned it in the pregame that this very year, there, there are teams that seem to be heading in opposite directions. Rutgers going up and Army slightly going down. Because of the difficulties that Army faces in recruiting, Rutgers trying to get a big-time program, so they're skyrocketing. Army is, is slightly down right now because of, of certain unique situations that the Army does have in recruiting. And Savoy does a great job to pick up the first down. He is finally hit by Newman, but it should be enough for an Army first down. Well, you mentioned they have, uh, they have some problems, but one of the major problems this year, if you take a look at the replay, is the fact that the cadets have just been pelted by injuries. Decimated, and look at that terrific hit on Savoy, the quarterback. You now you know why some of them are banged up just absolutely decimated by injuries. And you have to realize that the kids that have been recruited have been recruited as option quarterbacks. What they do best is run the option and run the football. You can't get blood from a stone, if you will. You can't make a thrower necessarily out of a kid who's, who, whose forte it is not. Mayweather up the middle, picks up a couple, and a second down and five coming up for Army. Rutgers, except for occasional changes, is still going with its first team defense. But someone whom I haven't seen recently is safety Darren Sellis. And I'm trying to look for him on the bench. I don't think he was hurt, but we've seen an awful lot of Jeff Newman here in the second half. This is Barth right up the middle. Powers his way close to the 20. 
And again, Army is moving the ball on the ground. You know, an interesting thing, uh, if you talk to Jim Young, Jim Young coached at Purdue and Arizona before coming here to West Point. He put the ball up all over the lot. Every once in a while, you ask him about the passing game, and he gets that faraway look in his eye and says, ah, yes, I remember the good old days. But he, he, he did have a good move in installing the wishbone offense here at West Point because it suits the style of play and players that they have here at the point. He is a good coach, and it's not like he doesn't like to pass. As I said, he used to put it up all over the lot at Arizona and Purdue and be very successful at it, but he has to adapt to his personnel, and he has. There as we take a look at him on the sideline. Army has a first down at the Rutgers 22-yard line. And Savoy keeps it, turns it inside, and dives ahead close to the 15-yard line. They'll actually mark him at the 16. Paul Gurria on the tackle for Rutgers. We say he wrestled him to the ground. Is that uh, <laughs> is that allowed? That might be appropriate in Gurria's well, his situation. Well, his dad, Tony, a professional wrestler, correct? That's right. And uh, the brother combination, of course, on the Rutgers team, Paul and Ivan Gurria. 25 consecutive rushes by the team from West Point. Second down and five. Savoy pitches on the reverse, and this time Rutgers reads it. Jordan will go down, a loss on the play of about three yards. Good defense that time by Rutgers. They had three men, three white shirts wait, waiting out there. Chris Evans, the big guy, body under control. Bob Seidel, the two linebackers out in the open field and said, Mr. Jordan, we'd like to have a word with you if if you will. And they put Jordan down at the 18. So now Army is faced with a third down and about seven. And a clock that is very rapidly running down. 7.45 remaining fourth quarter. The boy keeps, looks the pitch, does not. Giles wraps him up at the 18. No gain on the play. Maybe actually he picked up a yard. But the point here is that it's fourth down and five. Well, they have to go for it. This is certainly fourth down territory. No question about it. Chris Evans, again, also gets a piece of that tackle. You know, you talked about injuries, Lou. Uh, Army has been decimated by them. They've lost their first string quarterback, their second string quarterback, Moody, and their third string quarterback, Brian Babb, who had surgery with a problem not necessarily football-related, and we wish him well. Savoy pitches. Mayweather throws, end zone, incomplete, penalty marker on the play. This should be interference against Rutgers. Brock Washington was back there on defense, and the contact was obviously made. I don't know whether the ball was catchable. Good point, good point, Roger. I was thinking exactly the same thing. It was an obvious case of interference if the ball was catchable. It may not have been. Let's take a look on the replay and see if it is. There it is. Here's the option. Pitch back to Mayweather. Throws, and well, maybe, possibly. I are they calling it back or not? They're discussing. I don't think the ball is catchable. The 15-yard line. They are talking it over. If they do call it back, it will be Rutgers football. Let's see. Can we run that play again? Because I'd like to see whether that ball landed out of the end zone. I don't know, Roger. It almost looked like it hit the, the uh, back end, the back end line of the end zone. It, it's hard to say. And they do assess the penalty. Let's take a look at it. Let's see where that football lands. Uh, catchable ball. That's a catchable ball. It was certainly within, in play. Yeah. But, like, whether it was catchable on that play, I just don't know. Ball is at the two-yard line. This guy could catch it with his feet. <laughs> two-yard line. First and goal, Army. Savoy keeps, keeps, cannot turn the corner. He's I crunched down at the line of scrimmage, and Rutgers... Playing it well on the play. Joe Savoy, Joe Savoy. tackling Morel Savoy. <laughs> Number 78 is going to make the stop on the left side. There he goes. Oh, nice play. Beat the, bat, beat the block of Schleiden, an excellent offensive lineman. Beat the block and made the tackle. Good job by Savoy. Second down, goal to two. Up the middle, and in, in, touchdown, Army. Andy Peterson. Peterson on the touch, and the Cadets back in it. 
Didn't make it by much, Lou, but you don't have to. You just got to break that plane, and that's what Peterson did. He's a big halfback, 210 pounds, and he runs big. Let's take a look at it right now. Here it is. Let's see. It's a crossbuck play, similar kind of play to what Rutgers scored on, and Peterson is in for the score. You just saw the Army cannon. Of course, Rutgers has a cannon. I'll tell you, if I was uh, going into battle, I'd take the Army cannon, the Rutgers cannon, a little too old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's Keith Walker to kick the extra point. The kick is up. It is good. Six minutes, 25 seconds remaining fourth quarter. A break in the action. Rutgers 24, Army 14. Oh, hi. Just a reminder, before you decide where to buy your next car or truck, you owe it to yourself to visit either the number one dealer in Rockland, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Spring Valley, or the number one dealer in Orange, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Walden. Jim Smith Chevrolet sells more cars simply because they give people more of the wide selection, dependable service, and big savings they want. So see the Jim Smith Chevrolet nearest you. You'll like doing business with number one. I'm sure of it. on a long drive, takes the ball down the field and scores the touchdown. 24-14, the Cadets trail Rutgers by 10. So Army, uh, one of the intangibles that Army possesses, and Dick Anderson illustrated this early in the week, never quits, and they haven't here. 14 plays, 71 yards, took 5 minutes and 50 seconds. The previous drive, 525. Uh, 13 runs in one pass, and if uh, check me if I'm wrong, but that pass was the pass interference play. So Army in 14 plays did not complete a pass on that last drive. Well, that's passing when it counts, uh, Roger, when you, you get the <laughs> interference calls. I, I'm sure that was in the game plan from the beginning. <laughs> Most of it on the ground, and Army scores. It's 24-14, 6-25 remaining. Now, here's a key for Army. Army, of course, has just scored, but the cadets have not been able to stop Rutgers here in the second half. Defensively, they will have to do the job. They may go for an onside kick here. Bit Rambush puts it on the ground, but it's picked up by Rutgers and a fine cover by Jeff Newman, number 30. I don't know about that call. I just don't know. What do you think, Roger? I thought it was a very, very good call, and they changed right at the last minute. You know, you talk about the ball taking funny bounces, especially football. That took a very, very true bounce right into the hands of that man, right into the hands of Jeff we have him listed as Jeff Newman. We also have number 11 just, uh, listed as Jeff Newman. Right. That was not Jeff Newman, number 30. Well, and we'll, try number 30. we'll try to get 30. We'll try Jeff Newman's number 11. Okay. We know that for sure. Nice pickup, number 30. <laughs> that is Clint Person, number 30. We'll give credit where credit is due. Okay. And a running back who Rutgers has high hopes for, by the way. It is first and 10 for Rutgers at the Army 45. Here's Henderson trying to turn the corner. He turned it, and he's tripped up. Henderson was heading towards the end zone and then just tripped up at the last second by Darrell Scherb. but the Rutgers first down at the Army 29. The Rutgers offensive line just blowing huge holes, though, in the Army defense. Look at the size of this hole. Look at that. All right, he breaks an arm tackle there. Good job by Henderson, but he had the initial boost out of his offensive line. Boy, that is fine blocking up front. Campbell in motion. Henderson spins to the 28-yard line. Ball is on the ground. Oh, absolutely not. The ball was down. Not any question about that or shouldn't be. And the cadets are saying, hey, we got the ball, but referee does not agree. Well, they need a break. I mean, there's no question about it. They need a turnover right here. You can see he's down, and there comes yeah. the ball. Good hit by the linebacker. Nice defensive play by Mike Lover, who's back in the ball game. And a little bit of a chill in the air now here at West Point. It's, it's getting this place that, is that, absolutely that time beautiful. Here, isn't it Sun is going play? down. Second down and eight for Rutgers at the Army 28. Pitch to Henderson. He weaves his way. And that time he did fumble, but he covered. And that my friends, was a fumble, but he did cover, 
inside the 25. Schretzman again on the tackle. Let's take a look at that play. And remember, early in the first quarter, Henderson had that nice run. I think it was the first play from scrimmage. Fumbled the ball forward, and Rutgers was fortunate to recover. You know, talk about predictability here, though, Lou. Rutgers getting a, just a little bit predictable. That time, Dave Berdan, the defensive back, was right on the line of scrimmage, so they didn't get any offensive surge. Henderson needs one yard for a 100-yard game. You know, there's been no turnovers in this ball game so far. A couple of fumbles, but none lost. Third down and three. Mike Body, he should have enough for the first down. Actually, he's going to be a, just about a half a yard shy. Oh, this is going to bring up a big, big fourth down play, uh, play, Lou, if he made it. Let's take a look. It is fourth down, and Rutgers probably will go for the field right, goal. Right, because if Army does score, they'll need the three-point buffer to stay in the lead. It's against the wind, though, Lou. You know, it's going to be a 37-yarder against a fairly stiff breeze. I don't know. It's not an I easy kick. I don't know kick. either. I really don't. It's not an easy kick. It's make gonna... Army's defense make the stop. Uh, unofficially a 37-yarder against the wind. Coming to Bonnie in the game. Snap is good. Kick is up. Kick is good. So, Sclafani with a 37-yard field goal. And a break in the action. Four minutes and five seconds remaining in the game. The score, Rutgers 27 and Army 14. I remember when my father started Spitalier Furniture. He based his business on quality and integrity. He offered fine furniture at the lowest prices with incomparable service. That was 82 years ago, but Spitalary Furniture hasn't changed. My son Skeeter and I still offer the best furniture at the lowest prices and service only a hard-working father and son team can deliver. spitalary has been around for three generations, and Skeeter's son Tony will see that the tradition continues because Spitalary Furniture cares about tradition. Back at Mikey Stadium, the score is 27-14, Rutgers over Army. You know, I, I really have to uh, kind of applaud Dick Anderson's decision because if you look at it from a strategic standpoint, now Army needs two scores to win, two touchdowns. They need, they'll need a touchdown and a, and a field goal. And actually, that won't even do it. You need two touchdowns to win. Giesler keeps it on the ground. It's a bounding kick taken at the 20-yard line. And then across the 35, that's Dave Marks who picks up the football for, for Army. And Army will have it first down at 10 at the 36. Rutgers has scored on five of its last six drives. In the last six drives, Rutgers has scored 27 points, 10 points in this quarter. We talked how Rutgers has been able to turn that negative statistic, fourth quarter scoring, which was so bad last year, turn it around this year, and has done very, very well. I'm impressed by Army, but I continue to be impressed by Rutgers and a, a very well-balanced ball club. Savoy to throw. Airs it up. Throws it deep. And it is nearly caught. It was tipped by Washington and then almost brought in by Sean Jordan. A sophomore split end. Incomplete. Jordan is a speedster and he's a dangerous receiver. He has a touchdown pass to his uh, to his credit. As a matter of fact, he has two touchdown receptions, I should say, to his credit. Pump and go. There it is. Washington had good inside position, but that ball was very, very well thrown. That was a well-thrown pass. It just took the words out of my mouth. There's the RU drive. Four plays, 25 yards, of course, coming after the onside kick, and they get the field goal, and it's 27-14. Savoy keeping, keeping, still has it, and will be brought down from behind. Chuck Paw made a good play for Rutgers. And also in on the play, number 37, Darren Zellis. There he is. I was going to say, hadn't seen him for a while. Jeff Newman been getting the time. But Darren in and holding his position once again. As oh. We'll take a look at that play. This is perfect defense against the option. Now watch the man. You have to. It's assignment football. There's assignment number one, the quarterback. And there's Zellis, assignment number two for the pitch man. Can't play it any better than that. Savoy back to throw, in trouble, and is brought down. Initial pressure from Alec Hoke, who is then pushed down after the play is over, and also in on the play, Paul Gurria. That's the second sack, I believe, Udovich. Pat Udovich had the first one. Right now, Rutgers' defense starting to assert itself. They played the option perfectly on the previous play, got a good pass rush out of... Um, out of the defensive end that time, and uh, they're looking good defensively when they have to. 
Looks like there may be a flag on the play as well as the officials are talking to co-captain Gene Austin. And I think Gene said that uh, they're going to turn the penalty down. A face mask penalty, five-yard penalty. I believe it's against Rutgers, Roger. It is against Rutgers. Hmm. So we've got a replay coming up. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, yes, yeah. there it is. It was only a five-yarder, though. Yes, very unintentional. You know, he knew he had it, but it was too late to do anything about it. So I want to talk about next week, as with just over three minutes to go, Rutgers comfortably on top, 27-14. Talk about the importance of the Vanderbilt game next week, and then what lies ahead for Rutgers after that. And he's across the 45. That's a first down for Army. Big play by Morel Savoy, who has shown ability to run the football well uh, for the Cadets. Another tough one for Army next week, as well as Temple will be in town. I'll tell you, another big physical Eastern ball club. Boy, Army just can't catch a break. That'll be the first meeting ever, I believe, between Temple, a uh, second meeting, excuse me, between Temple and Army. And uh, Temple has had its ups and downs this year, but that'll be, as you mentioned, another tough game for for the cadets. Savoy pitches to Mayweather, turns the corner, and has an Army first down across the 40-yard line. You know, Rutgers have probably won this ball game. You know, I, I think there are a couple of people who are interested in whether or not Army scores on this drive, because if Army scores and just goes for the one, that'll be 27-21. What's the spread on this game, gentlemen, if I may be so crass? Seven, Seven points. points. Yes, indeed it is. 220 remaining. Savoy, roll tap, left side, in trouble, and now he'll be brought down. A huge loss as Rutgers covers it well. Again, it looks to be Chuck Paw back there, and the other Rutgers player is Alec Hoke teaming up again, and a timeout taken on the play. So, two minutes and 11 seconds remaining here at Mikey Stadium. There's a break in the action, and the score is Rutgers 27 and Army 14. Oh, hi. Just a reminder, before you decide where to buy your next car or truck, you owe it to yourself to visit either the number one dealer in Rockland, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Spring Valley, or the number one dealer in Orange, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Walden. Jim Smith Chevrolet sells more cars simply because they give people more of the wide selection, dependable service, and big savings they want. So see the Jim Smith Chevrolet nearest you. You'll like doing business with number one. I'm sure of it. And there's your score. Rutgers 27 and Army 14 with 2 minutes and 11 seconds remaining here in the football game. Army has the football after the big loss on the sack. It is second down and 21. Army has tried to throw the ball six times and a net yardage of minus four. And that even lowers their already uh, kind of paltry average for the year. Savoy throws long, has a receiver, incomplete. Mayweather was wide open. You know what, that, that's an example. Let's, let's use a baseball analogy of a pitcher actually aiming the ball instead of throwing the football. As a quarterback, you've got to get out there and you've got to go with it follow through we'll take a look at it on the replay there and take a look the take a look at the mismatch the man who was defending against mayweather oh left in the dust number the linebacker 50, chris pickell chris chris pickell a big linebacker about 220 pounds there's no way he's going to keep up with the 175 pound speedster but the quarterback has got to get back there set himself and throw and follow through nice arm he's got a strong arm but there's more to being a quarterback and we know that he's inexperienced but he'll come around Savoy back to throw, fires long, incomplete. Double coverage offered against Sean Jordan. Back there for Rutgers, a whole bunch of Scarlet Knights, including Sean Washington, Darren Sellers, and Gene Austin. I thought I saw Derek Baker in there. You might as well throw him in there, too. <laughs> and Baker is there, and Baker hurt his arm. He's running off. He signaled he wanted to go off, and he is hurt. That is the same arm that Baker hurt earlier can't imagine unless he fell after the play. Yes, he did. Yes, he went down on it. There it is. Spilled by his own man. Fourth down and forever. 
Well, he's, he's suiting up uh, for the last 57 seconds, I think, of the game. Well, Halloween is next week. There's the throw. That catch is made. Boy. Across the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. I guess forever, forever isn't far enough, huh? It was Keltner with a nice catch. He's your possession-type receiver. Pretty good-sized guy for a wide receiver. About 190 pounds. He'll get you the tough yardage over the middle. He'll make that kind of catch. Hurry up option uh, offense here for Army. 151 remaining in the fourth. It's first down of 10 for the cadets at the 27. Savoy rolls out. Right side. Looking, looking. Fires out of bounds. Intended for Jordan. He just threw that one away. With that 23-yard completion, that gives uh, Army, I believe, a positive 17 now passing offense. Well, much better, Roger, than the, certainly than the minus four they just had. They've got to pick that statistic up, though. They, they, just, they just can't. And here we take a look at the uh, incomplete pass. Now, this is a good play by Savoy. He sees he's got no receivers. He throws it where nobody can catch it except maybe one of the cheerleaders, and that doesn't necessarily count. Well, the Scarlet Knight gave an effort <laughs> as he raised his left hand. <laughs> okay. Savoy, one, one of five passing. It is second down and ten. At the 26, Savoy back to throw. Now he's in trouble, and Alec Hope drags him down at the 35. Another sack for Hope. So right there, uh, Hope now has one and a half sacks. I think he has we have four sacks overall. And this is bad news for Army. Savoy is the player who is down. And the last thing Army needs here is another injured quarterback. Look how he's taken down. It's a clean hit, but he's going to be pulled down like that. Ooh, That's got to hurt. Ow, that most certainly does. I, it, maybe it's something in the air oh, up here, no. but they, it is open season on quarterbacks, and he is down. That's going to bring in Mick Williams, the youngster, only a freshman. You think Savoy is inexperienced as a sophomore. Here comes Mick Williams, the fifth talented team, freshman. Fifth quarterback that Army has used this season. It's, it's nothing to even laugh about, I, I'll tell you. Not even not, not to joke about, nothing in jest. I tell you, it's Army, not even a sick joke. No, it, 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 it's it, tragic. It, it certainly is, because this is a good football club, a very competitive football club. But when you're down to your fifth quarterback, oh, man, especially with the wishbone off offense. And there's headed. Jim Young, who's got to feel badly about losing the game and possibly losing another quarterback. All right, McWilliams. In the game, rolls out left side. He's just going to keep the ball, turns it up, and he's across the 30-yard line. Stops the clock as he gets out of bounds. Nice first uh, play from scrimmage as a varsity quarterback. Let me, with a minute and 18 as the uh, clock stops with 118 remaining, let's talk about the Vanderbilt game next week uh, down in Nashville. Uh, again, a must-win as this was for Rutgers. And the week after that, if Rutgers defeats Vanderbilt, they'll be 6-2, and two, and then a string of games that get top teams in the East, Pitt and West Virginia and Temple. Three very important games that could well make the Rutgers program for the next couple of years. And we'll mention an Army schedule right after this play. That is incomplete. Intended down near the 10-yard line. Coverage by Baker intended for Eric Keltner. That ball was very, very well thrown. Thrown to between about three or four Rutgers defenders. And thrown where it could either be caught or incomplete. It was not going to be intercepted. All right, next week, uh, of course, Army will take on Temple. Air Force then. Uh, that'll be out in uh, Colorado. Lafayette, which is not one of the tougher games on the schedule. And then, of course, Navy. But three of the next four uh, teams that Army plays are tough. Temple, Air Force, and, of course, uh, Navy always tough. And right now, Rutgers is just, I believe, going to run out the clock. 1-12 remaining. Ernie back on a knee. And this game is, for all intents and purposes, over. Well, I, I guess so, uh, Luigi. The, uh, it was a very competitive ball game. Uh, there weren't a heck of a lot of surprises. We weren't sure exactly how Rutgers would attack Army. That was a bit of a surprise. We thought they might throw the football. It didn't turn out to be that way. I know we've got to go to break, and I guess we'll wrap it up when we come back. Okay, there's a, a break in the action. One minute and six seconds remaining, and Army has called a timeout. We'll take a break. The score is Rutgers 27 and Army 14. Oh, hi. Just a reminder, before you decide where to buy your next car or truck, you owe it to yourself to visit either the number one dealer in Rockland, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Spring Valley, or the number one dealer in Orange, Jim Smith Chevrolet in Walden. Jim Smith Chevrolet sells more cars simply because they give people more of the wide selection, dependable service, and big savings they want. So see the Jim Smith Chevrolet nearest you. 
You'll like doing business with number one. I'm sure of it. Look at one of the cadets. Not a happy day for Olenek. Army today, John Olenek, but they played fairly well, actually, uh, trailing 27-14. You know, you hate to beat a dead horse, but seriously, when a team is down to its fifth quarterback, very diff difficult to get anything going offensively, and the fact that the team did score 14 points, I think it's a credit to the Army team. I was talking to Dr. David Scott, who's the Rutgers team physician before the game, I said, boy, poor, as we take a look at Olenek, and uh, the quarterback, the loss, who has just killed this Army program this year in this Army season. Dr. Scott talking about the Army injury, saying, that sounds familiar. We had the same situation last year. And it can really uh, curtail your season. Right there, one of the Army players falling offside. Cooney. 30 seconds remaining. Uh, the game is, uh, is really over, fellas. Uh, let me uh, get some impressions from both of you as uh, we do a little premature wrap-up. First, uh, Roger, uh, let me ask you, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this Rutgers win. Well, I will go back to what I said at the beginning of the game, not because I don't have anything else to say, but I just want to reemphasize <laughs> consistency. Uh, offensive performance scoring on uh, six of their last seven drives against BC, five consecutive drives. Rutgers, once again, not turning the ball over at all. No interceptions, no fumbles lost, although they had three fumbles, still no fumbles lost. And uh, just a very, very balanced offense. Also, I believe penalty yardage no more than 25 or 30. And again, that's the Rutgers average this year. It was double that last year. 15 seconds. Frank will get your thoughts in a second. Okay. Ernie takes the snap. And he runs around. <laughs> He's still running around. Kill the clock. For four seconds. And now he takes a shot at the end of the game. But that will do it. And the ball game is over. Rutgers has defeated Army by the score of 27 to 14. And we heard from Roger and Frank, uh, your thoughts about the uh, Army loss today. Very quickly, Lou, if you talk about Rutgers in terms of consistency, then uh, for Army you have to talk in terms of injury. It has decimated them. I mean, we talked about the quarterback situation. Because you have to. You're talking about an option type of team, a strictly an option team. Do you realize how much a quarterback handles the ball in the option offense? And I'm not just talking about taking it and giving it to someone else and occasionally throwing it downfield. He has a part in a, a, a very, very important part in literally every single play. So it cannot be overemphasized. It's number one. But they've lost their starting linebackers. Uh, Griffiths was out today. They've been hurt in the secondary. They are absolutely decimated by injuries and yet are still competitive week in and week out. That's good coaching, and that is Jim Young with his son right there. They'll, they'll be in every ball game. There are uh, something that we don't see very often, and you hear quiet, and you see the cadet cheerleaders as well as everyone else in the stadium, including the Rutgers ball players, are stopping, as I believe that's probably the alma mater of the United States Military Academy, and again, everyone in this stadium that holds 40,000 people, soldiers, cadets, ball players, just standing, and listening quietly. They do it after every game here and have for a long time. So Rutgers wins this game by the score of uh, 27 to 14. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the people here at the Military Academy, uh, the Director of Athletics, Sister Carl Ulrich, and of course uh, everyone at the uh, Sports Information Department. Bob Kinney is the Rutgers. chief out there. I did a great job. A, a Rutgers, Rutgers graduate, people. journalism yeah. grad, Yes, I'm son there right now, as a matter of fact. And also uh, I want to thank all the people uh, at Rutgers as well. A couple of key stats before we leave you. Uh, the passing yards, uh, 203 for Rutgers, just 17 for Army. Uh, 208 yards rushing what for Rutgers. What balance. Yeah, 286 for Army. Uh, Rutgers, 411. Look at that. The big, I, I still say the big line. No turnovers for either club in this game. That's amazing. Uh, individually for Rutgers, Ernie was 14 out of 25, 203 yards, and no interceptions. All right, uh, that'll do it. I want to thank you very much for joining us up here at Mikey Stadium in West Point, New York. For Roger Cohen and Frank Lobono and the rest of the TKR Cable Sports crew who did another magnificent job once again today, I'm Lou Brogno thanking you very much for joining us. Once again, your final score is Rutgers 27 and Army 14.